Hi guys. Right, it's just before nine o'clock, so uh, I'm just preparing everything. So if I'm a bit quiet at the moment, don't worry, we're starting at nine, just so that I've got everything set up for you. Okay, right, we've got a, quite a good day today. So our schedule, we can say our schedule is nine to 9.30. We're going to be talking about the all new training site, uh, plus a marketing course overview, the marketing course that's come out also this week. And we have then um, a Q&A session from 9.30 to 10. And then we have a live build with Sabrina Doty. We're going to be looking at her site, Ingalls Conkillian. And then we're going to be looking at Kevin, who's going to be on, looking at Kevin. We'll be looking at Kevin, and Kevin's going to be showing us effective audience building. So he's going to show us that to round up the first morning session. So in the afternoon, we've got a lot of things coming on as well. This is going to be 3 p.m. BST time. So in three hours after this one ends, the next one starts to give us our day with Zendler. So I'm just going to set up a few things here whilst I'm, so if I'm off camera. Don't worry, I'll be back in a second. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Andrea. Good to see you. Good to see you make the morning. Normally, it's a bit quiet. Normally, it's like, you know, the birds are waking up and all that kind of thing. So it's normally a bit quiet. I've got a few questions to run through as well uh, when we get hit the um, half an hour point, because I'm just going to be talking about the new training area, which we've just done. So we're going to do that in a few seconds. So just, um, you know, grab a coffee or something and uh, we'll start in two minutes. All right, guys. So uh, welcome to A Day with Zenla. So I think this is about the third or fourth one that we've held. 
So what we do is we have it open for six hours. So I'm literally live for six hours, although we have keynote speakers coming in as well. And today we have the full lineup. So you've got me on here. You've got Alice, our newest member, and she's going to be doing a Facebook marketing slot. And we've got Rakesh on. He's going to be doing a roadmap, so you can ask him really technical questions. You know, he loves them. Uh, we've also got... Kevin on, who's going to be doing a building your audience section as well. So we're heavily vested this week in marketing. Now, as well as that, we're also running, I'm going to be showing you what I've done with Sabrina Tuity. That's uh, Ingalls Con Killian, and she does an English site. So I'm um, just going to show you what I've done on design. So it's almost like a live build, but I'm feeding it into a David Zendler. See how it goes. You know, every David Zendler, we try and do something a bit differently. And you notice that it's been refined as we're working out way through it so now i've actually put together these kind of scheduled slots it's going to be easier for two things one it's you can see what's coming up so you can just jump in when you want to and the other good thing about it is when i post it onto youtube it's going to be chapters so you better click it and go straight to that thing that's relevant for you so it's going to make things a lot easier and that's what we want we want easier so that brings us on to the tutorial site because the tutorial site again we've tried to make it easier so I'm going to show you what you get now with the tutorial site for you guys that um, haven't used it much. Um, Andrea, I don't know if you've used it much. I know Tracy has. She's all over it. So I'm going to share my screen now. I'm just going to show you what we have. If you haven't been here before, you need to go here. We've got everything on there. So let me share my screen. And guys, if I forget to share my screen or something, because occasionally I have my um, Simpson head on, make sure that you shout out in the chat. Probably won't happen, but it has done. Tracy, you know. So <laughs> let me share my screen and let's have a look. So tutorials.newzendler.com is our central hub for all of our training resources. So inside here, you can see we have extra things now. Along the top, we have a Zendler status. This tells you currently the um, if the site is under any kind of repair work or any of the systems are down like Vimeo, et cetera, et cetera. So straight from tutorials.muzenla, you can go there and you can check out the status straight away. So if I click that, you can see it's going to open up. It's all green. It's all operational. Fabulous. So next one, we've got PR Media. Now, this is for our partners. So we've given a media bank Google Drive access to actually go in and pull off some of our media to use for their marketing and uh, to get people into the platform. We still have our sender here. This will probably fade out at some point. Uh, we've got a support here. But um, these are the main ones, really, because then you just jump straight into the page where we have our light, latest live events. So you can see every Wednesday we do um, office hours and office hours uh, rotate between 5 p.m. and 10 a.m. for the uh, different time zones. Although Tracy tends to be on both of them. So I don't think she sleeps that much, Tracy. <laughs> so uh, and Tracy also goes in all the lives as well she's very very active and she helps out on the group so thank you Tracy for being here again and um, Andrea I don't know if you've been around the site at all you can put you can ask your questions in there and stuff Kevin's on there as well morning Kevin he's a morning bird like me and uh, now we've got uh, the event calendar here, which is for live events. So I've got a live event running. I'm about to show you the, to the well, this page. We're actually going to be covering how this site was put together. So it's kind of exclusive. It's behind the scenes look at how the tutorials.newzender site was created. So it's a really good one. It's going to happen on Sunday. And uh, it should be good fun for you guys to see just how this has all been put together. So as you can see, I'm in incognito mode, which is what I always use. You can get to that by clicking here and going into incognito. We always recommend to use the Chrome browser. OK, so I'm going to be using the Chrome browser throughout my presentations. So this is the latest live events area. And we move down here. I'm going to cover this in a minute, the Masterclass Bundle. This is our bundle for everything on our online training courses. So training courses that are online, not our live events that happen. OK, these are ones that are just on the platform for you guys to access. Whether you be free, pro or premium, you get access to all this. And we don't charge for any of this at all. 
uh, at all. So uh, next we have the NZ feature list and matrix. This is being updated, but um, you can find out a comparison between the free, pro and premium. And you can also look at the our competition. So at the moment, we've got Think If It, Teachable and Kajabi. We're going to add Podia to this as well. Um, so that's going to be on here as well. Uh, we have a little bit about us. And then we have a connect down the bottom. This is a new section that's been added as well. So we do actually have a Twitter and we do have an Instagram account. Uh, they haven't been active for quite a long time. So we're just uploading a ton of content onto these platforms. So you might want to join up, but probably join up in a month or two once we've got all our stuff on there, because at the moment there's going to be reams of stuff going on there and it's going to fill up your pages. So I would join this in about a month or two but i put it in there because hopefully you guys that use twitter and instagram will want to go on there okay so i'm going to now jump into the nz masterclass bundle so if you're on tutorials.newzender.com click enroll and when you've only got to enroll once you get access to everything you're going to see you can put your email and you can enroll for free now once you've enrolled you're going to be in the platform and that's where i'm going to jump next here we go. So you come into the platform, you've logged in, you get welcome back. And down here, you now have this area here. So you're going to notice that it's shuffled a little bit. Latest news has dropped down. This has dropped up. But what it means now is this little block that you're seeing on screen will appear everywhere within the courses. So you'll always be able to get back. So if we go enter this zone for Learn Zender, which is if you have not used the platform, you should start here. You can see we can go into these courses and you can work your way through. And you can also see this is a typical, with this particular one, this is a typical user flow. So you'd start the quick start guide, do the basic setup checklist, and then you go on to the complete guide to Zender, which is a massive course, all right? It's huge. So we're going to go into, uh, notice Kevin said, by the time we get used to the changes, they change again. Yeah, we're always trying, try, well, it's your fault, Kevin, you were mentioning this, so <laughs> you're, you're to blame. Uh, so, right, so we're going to go in here now, the quick, quick start guide, and we jump into the quick start guide, and it is the same courses. The courses haven't changed the way they work, so you guys that are familiar with it will, uh, it's still the same, you know, the course content and everything is the same, all the pages, but with the exception that if you come down the bottom here, you're going to see the block again. So this means it's really easy for you guys to jump back and forth between these different courses and between them all. So I want to just skip marketing for a section for a second and jump on to the Zendler Extras, uh, because I know a lot of you guys use a lot of the Zendler Extra courses that we've created now, these are generally courses that you have actually asked for yourself. So you've asked for uh, like, how do I do this? Or wouldn't it be good? Or, you, or you've had trouble with things like designing your website. And don't know about that side of it because, you know, not everybody's a designer. You can go in there and have a very relaxed. And I try the courses are sort of designed to be newbies, like don't know anything about any of this stuff so we start a real grassroots level and we don't go too highbrow with it we don't go too complex with it so it builds up your um, understanding of these things in a very light approach so you don't you guys don't get overwhelmed so we put because we have a lot of these and they're extra courses we've put them into this section on its own so i know tracy's a big fan of the ninja tricks which is a coding course but it's a gentle coding course so she uses that a lot. Uh, we have a new one here, which was the Zen the theme packs, where we've actually done some designs that I'll jump into it and show you. Um, so in here, you're going to see that we have little theme packs, tells you how to, what they're for, downloading the packs, installation of packs, customizing the theme. So I give you information on how to do all of that. Very easy to do. Just got to jump in and do it. And then you can see the actual uh, templates that we've got for you the page blocks or the complete page styles that we've got for you that you can put in there. So we've got form blocks. We've still got some things to come. Call to action pack two. We've got some funnel blocks coming in there. And um, yeah, call to action pack one as well. So these are well worth jumping into. You might see something in there you like. You can preview them before you download by hitting this button. Then you can see what we're getting. So you can take any of these blocks. That's a block is in this area. Another block is in this area. 
and you can change the graphics in the back, change the wording, change the button and links in the button. And you can apply them really, really, really quickly. Um, people that are selling their theme packs, that's what they're doing. They're doing exactly the same thing. So you can get them for free here. So I do need to add more, but we are bringing in with Page Builder 2.0. We are bringing in the ability to pick templates or themes to go through it. So that's going to be awesome, right? And the team, I know they're going to be trying to produce these each week. So there's going to, it's going to be a library of ones you can pull, up, pull out, all professionally designed, all responsive, and you'll just better pick them. It's going to be amazing, guys. I know you've been, especially people coming into it that are talking about on the Facebook group, like, oh, do you know someone who can design my pages and all this stuff? There, you're going to have a loads of stuff. You just about to click it and load it in, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Can't wait to see that when that comes out. So that is how they work for this. So again, you can see down the bottom, we can jump back to that zone if we want to. I'm calling them zones. And I want to move on to Zen the Boot Camps because this is really, uh, if you guys that have followed all Kevin's challenges, uh, Kevin's renamed them now and they're actually boot camps. So he's running boot camps. So these boot camps, once he's finished the lives, um, he might put some of them in here, not all of them. So it's always best to attend the lives with Kevin when he can. He likes that interaction, as do I with my Sunday lives. But we realise there needs to be static courses as well. So inside here, uh, he's got some great ones going on. He's got launch your first course challenge. These are extremely popular. Um, definitely check them out um, they're really nice to to watch you don't even have to do anything you can just watch them and learn a little bit about the platform for sure so i want to jump back now to zen the marketing there's this brand new section and i just want to reiterate a few points in here i'm going to look at the chat in a minute once i finish this stuff so if you look at the zen the marketing we have a zen the basic marketing course now this is there is a there is a caveat for this. You need to send a video testimonial about Zendler. Now, I've had a student say, why do I have to? I'm a paid member. Why do I have to do a video for it? Um, when, you know, it might be some people that haven't got their site together and all of these things. Well, like guys, if you haven't got your site together and you haven't got a course together, then you've got nothing to market. So you should have all that stuff. Unless, of course, you're not using the Zendler platform and you're using something else and just taking this course for free. All right. In which case. So you need to have your site, you need to have your course together and you need and it is very much based on video, this particular marketing course. And I'm thinking about renaming it to Zenla Video Marketing, but it covers everything because inside this course, we don't only set up YouTube channel. We do Facebook. We do SEO for all your pages. We do everything in there going through all of the things. So. A caveat is to do a video. Reason being, you send us a video. You've already used the platform because you create your site, create your course. So then you're going to know the platform and you can do, do us a video. Ideally, we'd like a video. However, we do realize some people feel really uncomfortable on camera and they just don't want to be on camera or those things. So what we've done at the bottom, you can see, I'm just going to jump into it just to show you, is down here gives a bit of information. And if we go into this first one, this is compulsory. So this needs to be done before you move on. You'll see that if you don't want to do a video, and I give all information about the video, you can send us a review on Trustpilot, okay? And you just need to submit that back to us as text. And then we can then approve you to go through the rest of the course. And the course is fairly big, guys. So it started off being maybe a four week course, but ended up being a, about a seven, seven week or eight week course. I can't remember because the students that I was taking through preliminary students, 34 of them, they were asking questions about certain points. One of them was being good on camera. So we got a coach on, presenting coach Howard, to go and do parts of this as well. So it's lots of video. It's very powerful. You will get page one ranking under the video if you follow this through. Um, for you guys that are skipping sections, then you're going to miss out. You need to do it in order. It's really important you follow this in order. And it's quite easy to do. 
you know, marketing, they make this big thing about it being really hard, but it's actually easy once you know the basics of it. And that's what this course aims to do. OK, and remember that Kevin's running lots of challenges as well. Uh, boot camps, sorry. So he's going to be covering some marketing things. I know that he's doing a Google Ads one, which is going to be brilliant. And having that basic knowledge in here, you can one, ask him more questions and also build on what. So whatever we're doing, we're trying to build on the next one. So also in this marketing section, we have a five day blogging challenge. This is hugely popular. Um, it's a really simple approach to doing things the way Kevin explains it makes it very easy for you to get into so you can just get on with what Kevin's telling you to do and you will get results and I know Kevin's thinking about doing a more advanced one of these as well so that could come later so let me just have a look at the group questions Oh, Kevin's answering a few things. Thank you, Kevin, if you're on there. Yeah, so Kevin's got a Zen chat, which is brilliant. It's going to be really good. It's kind of like a networking type of event. Uh, he's got quite a few, quite a few events coming up. So definitely um, follow Kevin or ask him on there. Kevin, I do find that through. Yeah. So Kevin's uh, chats and everything, we put it all into the Facebook group, guys. So if you go into the announcements or in events, you'll find it in there. Uh, that's where we hold all that stuff out. So um, I'm sure Kevin will reply on that anyway. The next one isn't in the area yet. It will be very soon. So he's going to put them up very soon. So, guys, this is the new site. So really easy to find your way around, navigate around. Also, this is going to give us the ability to expand as well. Because the way we had it before was all the courses were together. So it was kind of like, although we blocked it out on a page, we kind of had it all together. So now we've got all these separate areas. And you'll notice that they are separate areas, you know. And you might be like, well, how have you done that? How have you managed to do that? This is all under one this is all under one bundle, by the way. Okay, it's a little bit of a clue there. It's under one bundle, multiple courses in that bundle. That's why they're all showing up. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to show you how we did this on Sundays live for this, which you can also find in the event in Facebook. So I'm going to stop the share and I'll just give you the link. And you can find out how we do it. Because I know a lot of you, a lot of you want to actually go in and do membership sites. So for this, it's, it's going to be really good for you to, to get onto it. So I'm going to just grab that URL. I've got to grab it from the tutorial site. This is happening Sunday. Uh, there will be a replay, but the replay will go out to YouTube probably a week after the live event. Now, I want to try and entice people to come into the live events because we like that interaction. We like you to, you know, talk to other people, get to know other people, um, especially kind of like if you're marketing and stuff, people need to know about you. And, you know, there's a lot of people in here that know other people and you can network with them as that's why Kevin started the Zen chat. And it's amazing what you can get out of it really so i'm going to put that link to the live that i'm talking about now into the chat so you can register there i've already got quite a lot of people on this already and they're quite interested so i think it's 134 at the moment so i've got 134 people um like i was saying on office hours the other day hope they don't all turn up otherwise it will blow the internet up so but it's going to be a good one for you guys that are doing membership sites you definitely want to stay in that and if you can't make it in a week's time, it will go on to the YouTube channel, all right, under our YouTube part, which I need to quickly show you. So here's our YouTube channel. So down here, you're going to see that we have live workshops. So it will drop into this area. And you can see all our David Zendlers going here. This is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Zendler. Again, if you go to tutorials.newzendler.com, down the bottom, get connected, social. We've got all our social links. We've got Facebook, YouTube, 
Twitter, Instagram. So you can click and go straight through to these areas from there. But this is a good one. This is the live build one, which I started. And uh, we're going to be running more of these. I've already got Pete. We've got Peter Duigin, and he's um, he's actually done the live in there for Wushu Martial Arts site. Should have got Kevin in on that one because Kevin is into his martial arts as well. So we've got Sarah, Sabrina, sorry, on later for the live build. So what I want to do now is I want to answer a few questions. So I'm going to have a look in the group. I have a few questions I need to already show people because they were asking in the group and none of them have been answered yet. So I'm going to need to just post a quick one. So I've got this page here and a question that came in was like, how do I see what my site looks like in responsive mode? So this is a really good question and it's a really easy way to do it if you're using Google Chrome. In fact, most of the browsers do this, but Google Chrome is really easy and that's our preferred browser. So what you can do is you can right hand click here and you can go down to inspect. That's going to open up a console probably on your right hand side or down the bottom and you can disconnect it as well. So if you do this, I've got double monitor setup, so I have it on my other monitor. And you just click this here. Watch what happens to the screen. Uh, it's back to normal, down. And I'm gonna drag this across because now I've activated it. I can just pop over here. You can pick the device. So if I wanna see what it looks like on a Galaxy S5, I can just click it. If I wanna see what it looks like on an iPhone X, I can look at it. And you can scroll through it and make sure that responsively everything works, which it does with this site because I checked it. But a lot of people have problems with this, as you're going to see in the live build. Uh, Sabrina has got images and they're different sizes, and they pop up at different sizes inside mobile, which needs to be pointed out to her. Um, and I'll be showing ways to fix that. So this is a really easy way to be able to do this. So remember in Chrome, right hand click with your mouse, go down to inspect, a little thing will come up, hit the little tab there and you've got responsive mode. So quite a big tip for people there. There's lots of this code and things like this, this does other stuff. This is all for CSS and coding, but this is a really handy little tool to be able to click and find out what your site looks like responsively in different mobile devices or tablet devices. So I've got uh, Sadashif and I'm about to answer his question. His question was, he has a, he wants to have a form where he takes people's name and email. And then he, if they put that in there, and of course, if they put their name and email like this one, dink, dink, fill that out, you go in, and you become a lead, which means that you can sell, you can then email them and get them to buy into a course. So what Sadashif is saying is, can we have this type of form and then give them a free PDF? Now, his idea was to have them fill it out and then get the PDF, which we can do. And he wanted to also then email them as well. And we can do all of those things, but I would advise against having a button here that when they fill these details out, they get a freebie straight afterwards. Right, why? Because they could put a fake email address in there, then they could hit the join or the get PDF, and then they would get it for free because it would just take them to a page that's gonna give them that download, yeah? Um, also, that download would be public, so there is a chance that it could be shared. However, if you just did it that it emailed them, then if they put a fake email address, they'll never get your freebie. Okay, so they're forced to get it through that. So I'm going to show you how you can do it in here. I'm just going to stop my screen share whilst I log into the system. Really easy, guys, this. So easy.
Right, uh, let me find my page. Where is it? All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm in my pages. So I got this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a little form and for it to work. Now, Sadashif wanted it to be set up as a pop up. So I've got a test page here. I'm not even sure what's on this page. All oh, right, just me testing something out. So I can use this. So first thing is what we need to do is create the form. OK, but before we need to do that, we need to say where the form is going to connect to. So what's going to happen with that form once a person puts their name and their email address in there? So it's really easy. So we don't want to. We can utilize the power of automations, automations via marketing funnels. So we're not going to create a funnel with funnel steps. We're going to create a funnel that has no steps, but just uses the automation. So let me show you. So first step one, go into marketing funnels. This is how quick it is. OK, so I'm going to go and create a funnel. I'm going to just go through these steps. I don't even care, guys. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to name this. What am I going to name it? It's going to be uh, let's call it send PDF. It makes it nice and easy, doesn't it? And I'm going to click next to that. It's going to ask me to pick a template. I really it doesn't matter which template because I'm going to delete them out. I'm going to click finish. It's going to then set up my steps for me. There we go, funnel steps. And I can leave this, but I can delete them out. You don't need to, I just do it to make it nice and clean. Okay, so I've deleted all my funnel steps out. So you're like, wow, what's going on? So all I need is automations. So if I come into automations now, I can go into one of the automations in here. And all I wanna do with this particular automation is I want to give them the link to the free PDF. So I'm gonna go, type something in here, I'm deleting all this stuff out. Here is your free PDF. And then I link to it, whatever my link is for my PDF. Just put thank you. So the, the link to the PDF, course i can go to i'm going to right hand click i'm right hand clicking because i don't want to lose this page right hand click open link in new tab okay and i'm going to go to my media i can select a pdf uh, there's a pdf so i will have uploaded a pdf yep and then i'm going to go to the little share icon here and anyone with a link can download this. Make sure it is that if you have it logged in users, they're not going to be able to access it. You need anyone with a link can download. And I click copy, click done, jump back to here. I'm going to close that tab down now. I've got the link. I'm going to put that in there. Go to link, link and drop that link in there. Click done and then click save changes. And it's going to ask this action is currently paused. Do you want to make it live? Yes, I do. Apply to existing leads. I haven't got any, so I can click yes or no. I'm going to click no. Um, and I can delete these ones out because I'm purely using this for this. So when someone goes in, puts their name and their email to whatever the form you set up, it will, what I want to do is when they click that submit, I want them to be added to a funnel. Okay. The funnel I'm going to add them to is this new one, PDF send funnel. Because what will happen then is after as soon as they do it, it will send this email out straight to them. Yeah, that's all it's going to do. So if I go back to funnels now, you're going to see in here, I've got my send PDF funnel already. That's all ready to go. So I'm going to go and set the page up now. So I'm going to go to my pages. And I'm going to go to test. Just let this load. Hopefully the gremlins are not gonna uh, pop up.
he wants a say the sheaf wants a pop-up form from a thumbnail now you'll need to use coding to do that i'm just showing you how to do a pop-up i'm not going to get into setting up um using code to do a pop-up from that this is how to do it this is how to do what you want want to be able to do so i have the form here and i've got a name so i'm going to click this i'm using the default one you can change this however you like and we're going to click this little gear icon and over here under settings we're going to have action you've got action submit form which is absolutely fine but look at this add to funnel so we go and we pick our funnel there send pdf so now we've done this all i need to do then is save it so now i've done that when someone fills their name up and their email address and they hit sub subscribe they will come into your site as a lead but at the same time because you've got a send pdf funnel it will activate the funnel and the funnel will take their email address and their name and it will send that email out to them giving them a link to your pdf now if you wanted to some people do want to set up a page where they get instant download straight after all you need to do is set up a page a new page create a new page put your pdf or your freebie in that page and on the post submit action that means after the button has been clicked the, it will redirect them to that page that you've picked so you put go to link and then you put that normally people put a thank you page but you could have it as a thank you and a download page so you can put the download page in there so that would do two things one it would send the email out to them for your automations and the second part of this would send um, them to a page after they've hit the button that gives them the freebie so that's how you can do it um Sadashif. so he's put he wants a pop-up form on a thumbnail but that requires coding to get something to pop up in the in the form so that's how it works you can do a pop-up from a button by the way guys if you have a button here let me just show you you see how one question can lead to so many questions so let me go and add a new element here i'm going to add a, a button element there we go so what i can do is i can make the pop-up activate via a button so i can go to the settings here across on the button go to action and i can just choose open pop-up now that will open that pop-up and then they can fill their details in they will then trigger the automation which will send the email out to them and of course you can have a post submit action as well so there we go speedily we went through all of that stuff but you can see how quick you can set it up and of course you know guys you can save these blocks out and reuse them in other places uh, just like i have for this uh, with these forms you can see in here i've actually tagged them so you noticed in here when you have a button over here you can also set up tags so on all of the forms i have pre-launch this is a pre-launch page the site isn't ready yet so it's a pre-launch to capture leads and it's actively capturing leads now this is a live site so this in here will tag them with pre-launch one so i know the people that are tagged with pre-launch one i'm not going to show you people's names because it's gdpr stuff but i know that they've come from this page so i know that if they go to something like the free stuff page these go straight into funnels and each of these funnels is labeled with a new tag so it's tagged with pre-launch two pre-launch three pre-launch four pre-launch five down here so when they click it they'll go into a funnel which will then send them a freebie via email exactly the same way that i sort of showed you there except i cut the, the pun the funnel steps out so hopefully that's really clear great chrome chrome tip fabulous look guys got any questions i think we've got a few minutes i was i'm going to pause for a little bit before we get into so i can set up for sabrina but if we have any questions 
always just drop your questions into the chat there and I can have a look. I'm going to have a quick look now, see if there's anything coming in here. So Kevin, yeah, Kevin's built two martial arts sites on Zen. They're both doing well. Right, so Johan is finding it a bit difficult to search among all the videos. So that's exactly why we did this. So you've got, we've, we've made it really easy by putting Learn Zenla. So you've got that Learn Zenla zone and it's just those three videos in there. You know, if you want to learn any more, it's kind of skip around. Remember, these are all done for free. So inside of lots of the videos, we do have search on the bigger videos. We have like the complete guide to Zenla. We have search capability in there. So you've got search at the top to search through everything. You've also got search down the bottom area as well to pick up keywords that you're looking for. Uh, all of in the complete guide to Zenla, all of the sections are named appropriately for that section so one might be marketing funnels and it's just on marketing funnels if your site creation there's another section called site creation so we tried to make it so it's really quick for you guys to pick it up but it is a huge course so sometimes it can seem a bit overwhelming remember you can always go onto our youtube channel and you can do a quick search there because these are on our youtube channel they're more self-contained the videos are self-contained on there so if I jump into our, I'll just share my screen again, on our YouTube channel here, if you go to youtube.com forward slash Steve forward slash Zenla, you'll see you get a little search here. So if I was looking for something like funnels, for instance, I could just type in there, everything we've done on funnels comes up in here. So you can see where they all are. You can also see if we've done any new features like single sign on and our single sign on videos have come up. So in here is a really quick way of searching as well uh, for any content that you're after. So Johan, hopefully that's gonna help you. The other thing is also getting familiar with something. So once you start getting familiar with some of the courses, then you'll be able to go back really quickly. So Johan, hopefully that's helped you. Um, Safaya, so we're talking about tutorials.newzenla. So that's tutorials.newzenla.com. That's our training site. Uh, we, we feature this link everywhere in all of the lives we do. We always, we always mention it, but I'll put it into the chat for you. So you've got it in there as well. So just having a look through and the networking members. Oh, so Tracy's um, dedicating October, all oh, the whole of October uh, to setting up a website and courses. Uh, Tracy, the, the longest part is not using the Zenda platform to set up a course or even your site. The longest part will actually be setting up your courses themselves. That's the time consuming part. Uh, what I would suggest is you concentrate your attention on setting up any videos, PowerPoint slides or media, and you put them in a nice folder structure so that you can quickly start adding those to your, uh, your site once you start building it. So I can give you an example of the kind of structure. I'll show you one of the courses uh, that I've got. Hold on a second, guys, before I share my screen, I've got to get the right course. Let's go on to the quick start guide. Yeah, so quick start guide is a good one to show you. So let me share my screen. This might help you out, Tracy. So what you can see what I've done here is I make sure all of my content is based in the right folders for each thing that I'm working on. So you can see I've got a folder there, getting prepared for our course creation or getting prepared for our site creation. That ties up with the section name inside the course itself. So in, in here, <clears throat> in here, you can see the video that we've got, and then you can see my edited video, and then you can see the slide for it that's added as well and any other material. So what you're going to find is throughout all of these folders, that same format remains the same, but it means that I can really quickly 
get to the video. I've had it where people have said, oh, there's something wrong in that video. And I've just gone straight into the folder, straight into the video, edited it, and then re-uploaded it to the system. So this is a really quick, efficient way of working. And always I use um, Photoshop to do all my images. So some people don't, some people use Canva. So if you've got a template that you've got, then use that template. Yeah, and we're gonna, we'll probably look at that later anyway with um, Sabrina's site. But hopefully that should help you. So it's getting organized with these things can uh, just make your life so much easier. And you, you back it up and you've got a copy of it so you can always get it back if you need to. So Tracy, hopefully that's helped you. Just having a look. Yeah, Kevin's answered lots of these, which is really good. Yeah, sorry, Carrie. Um, you can just do a screenshot if you like and just upload that as an image. Um, you can actually grab the, the reviews URL um, as well. So you can add the URL or you can upload a screenshot. So great Chrome tip. Okay, I think we're getting we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, I'm using October to create my site. I've done that one. Right. Right, okay, Johan. Yeah, so the problem Johan's got is the problem for me is I need to know the exact words that you that you named topic to find when I search. For example, if I want to search and find how to create course evaluation, I get no hits. Um, all right, okay, so <laughs> yeah, so you'd be running something like a quiz or a, an assignment or something like that. So you need to find the right terminology. I can't really help you with that. You need to make sure you're using the right terminology that we use in Zenla. So if you're using, if you want to do a course evaluation for something, you probably use something like assignments. What I would suggest, Johan, because the group is so, so um, friendly and um, helpful, is just put it, just if you're looking for a question like that and you can't find it in the videos, just post it on the Facebook group. People might ask you, ask you a bit more information on it. They might say, well, what do you need that for? Um, there was one today with someone saying, can someone help me? They wanted to pay someone to um, add a link to their site to some content, but they didn't actually explain what they were trying to do. Were they trying to do a link to another page with that content on? Were they trying to do a link inside of a page in copy text and then link it to a document? It wasn't explained. So if you just explain it a little bit, what you're trying to achieve inside the Facebook group and post it, probably people will get back to you straight away and tell you, oh, you need assignments for that. So then if they give you that keyword assignment, you can go and check out assignment videos and um, see how that's created. Yeah, so it's I know it's really hard sometimes, Johan, because you're trying to find the right. I mean, how many times you've been on Google and you're looking for something very specific and you can't find it. So when you when you do it for a long, long time, you kind of work with like, oh, what what's the related word to it? And you have a list of these related words. You put them in and you, and you nail down what you're trying to find <laughs> because terminology and language is vast you know so that's the way it goes so jackie jackie's up okay just waking up this is really helpful how can i watch later if i miss jackie this is on here so after i finish it will still be here you can just replay it so johan sorted out that's brilliant okay so we're coming up to 9 43 now so at 10 o'clock, uh, Sabrina's going to join us and I'm going to be jumping into her site and we're going to be looking at that. So as I'm doing these things, guys, you know, if you've got any questions, put the questions in the chat and I always allow a bit of time just to go through them. Sabrina's going to be asking me questions as well, I'm sure. And what I'm going to be asking her questions on what she thinks and um, those sort of things. And we have about an hour and a half with, I don't think we'll be an hour and a half. So we might finish a bit early. I might take another break because I'm kind of on all day. And then we've also got Kevin on as well later as well. I see Kevin's up and about. He's jumped off for a while, but he'll be back. 
So I'm going to go and flick up the site that we're going to be working on so you guys can see. So let me just flip that over there. All right, so this is Ingalls Con Killian. So Sabrina's going to talk, talk to us about this in a minute, but this is a site we're working on. So as a site, it's perfectly acceptable, but there's a few key design issues that just need tweaking. You know, obviously she's in she's English, so they do English. So it's going to be good grammatically and all those things. So, but there are some real key things here that can make it just go go a stage higher i think she's added a new section in here i don't remember this uh, but we're going to look through this and we're going to see what we can do to make this better so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to set up i'm only working on one page i'm working on the home page but we might look at other pages and what we're trying to do with that one page is we're trying to set a style so once a style has been achieved you can then roll that through. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I set up. What I do when I see a site, I go, what, what do I like? What does the client like? What sort of site are they looking for? Are they looking for it to be very business orientated? Are they looking for it to be really clean and minimal? Are, are they really into explosive colors? Um, I looked at a site the other day called Fly Fusion and um, tons of colors on it. It looks really good because it was that way but other sites they want you've got to set the tone and find out what you're trying to market the site towards or who you're trying to market it towards so that can dictate the design of the site um, as far as the color palettes and all of these things are sorted out the first thing i do when i look at a site from a designer's point of view is i go right okay we need to look at this site we need to find what you're trying to get what's your what's your key thing here and um sabrina's was like almost minimal clean business looking but like kind of more like apple that time technological technology that kind of thing so straight away from that i go right we're going to use silvers and we're going to use like uh, maybe some bronzes in there just to give it a little bit of a kick um so straight away i've got that then i'm like right the fonts are the fonts working we should stick to two for beginners you should stick to two fonts max inside your site maybe a third third font which we do with sabrina's site but we only use that to pick up certain things. In this case, little keywords like these kind of things here. And I'll be taking you through that. So I'm going to have a sort of 10 minute break and then Sabrina is going to join us and we will be working on this site and you'll see what um, what I've come up with. Uh, and she can use it. So we're, I'm doing live. This is really from our live build series. So I have a few live build people already that I'm going to work through and then I'll be posting saying if you want your site looked at um, then I just do a, a quick live build on one page and you can use use those elements save them out and reuse them in the site so we're going to be doing that in a minute I'm also going to be checking in on the questions as well so I'm going to have a quick 10 minute break and then I'll be back at 10 o'clock for Sabrina's slot so we're ahead of schedule which is fine, you know, it's live. This is what happens. So I'm going to come back in a minute. So guys, just grab a coffee or something. Come back at 10 if you want to, or if you want to come into a later slot, drop back later and watch the replay. It's all very relaxed and chilled, yeah? Okay, I'm going to stop the share and I'll see you very soon.
Hi guys, back again. So yeah, it's nice to have a like a few minutes sort of every hour just to give you sort of a chance to kind of reset. So I'm gonna have Sabrina on very, very soon. And I'm just gonna get myself ready. Right, I have to be very careful when I'm actually showcasing people's sites because I have admin access and obviously they've got live students in there. We can't show that information or any kind of uh, money or any of those sort of things. So I have to be really careful with the screen sharing. Just something to bear in mind if you guys are doing that. Also water, you need water while you're doing these things little tip otherwise you just dehydrate and um, for you guys I'm actually doing a, a course with Howard he's actually telling me how to sort of keep my voice I tend to sort of shout and that can really wear your voice out if you're doing sort of over two three hours so I have to be quite careful it's really good now when we first started I did a whole one where I was literally on my own the whole time Rakesh was on there and it destroyed me. It destroyed me. So I'm not used to doing such long live sessions. So I'm getting used to it now. It's okay. And we have more people joining in. I'm trying to set up these little slots where people can just jump in, uh, which is good. So I'm going to keep an eye out for Sabrina, who's going to pop up. And I hope you guys like, do you like that little back soon? So I did a little a little slide just in Canva and you can just use that so you can switch between your background that I've got at the moment, put it in there and come off. So I can see that Sabrina is joining us. Good morning. Morning, Sabrina. How are you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. We're live. Yay. We're live on the group. So uh, yeah, Sabrina, do you want to talk a little bit about your um, your site? I will. I haven't looked at anything you've done because uh, I wanted to be a surprise. I had like a quick look at the front. I thought, oh, that looks fantastic. But I haven't really looked at it. So, um, yeah, so uh, I work with my husband here from Spain. Both of us are Irish, but we moved to Spain 10 years ago. And we've been teaching English since. And uh, I recently started working full time with him. And most of what we do is work in companies. You can hear me okay, no? Yeah, yes, yeah, good. Yeah. good. Yeah, we work in companies here, uh, normally around Alicante, but in Spain as well, uh, giving English classes, English programs. And about a year ago, I started setting up online courses. You know, this like, yeah, set up an online course, passive income crack, that doesn't really... <laughs> doesn't work like that but yeah so uh, so I've been in the online space for about a year I mean all of our classes now are online obviously with the COVID situation so it's great um, but yeah we work with companies we work with professionals and we do group classes as well for uh, people who are learning English here in Spain and around the world as well so that's what we do so the website is um, kind of has a couple of purposes it has the purpose of a uh, Kind of promoting our work with companies because what we also do for the companies in Spain is help them set up funding for their classes so they can have like free classes and then also to advertise our services for the groups and then for the online part which um you know I'm not having too many students in there at all yet but little by little between yeah. your marketing course and things like that you know little by little I'll get there yeah. with that. Yeah, so. Sabrina's done um, the marketing course. She's she's pretty active on all the lives that we do. And that's what you need. Like to get good at this, you need to be active and you need to be learning these new things. You know, because not only, yeah, I mean, Sabrina, you're doing all this yourself, aren't you? You're not hiring anyone to do any bits for you. No, no, all myself. We got someone from Fiverr for the first time last week to do the logo. <laughs> that's it. The rest <laughs> has been just, just me. 
<laughs> but so, yeah. the good thing about that is that you are going to know the platform or you're going to know your site inside out now this yeah. is a big thing if you get other people to do stuff for you you're like well how do they do that you've got to keep going back to people and the system's easy to work but you've always got this thing that that causes problems because you know especially if you're not a designer and you're trying to design it so sometimes you need a pointer and i think that's why these live builds will be quite good because it sets a kind of tone you can sort of understand where it's going from yeah. or where you want to get it to so that's what we're trying to achieve here so i have seen a few things in the site i don't want to scare you too much but um, they're pretty easy to fix there's nothing wrong with it obviously all the words and everything are perfect because you're in, you're doing your english yeah so i saw all... a mistake this morning so <laughs> Oh, you saw a mistake. It was that. I was looking. It's like, well, not good for an English teacher, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it happens. You know, it happens to everybody. It doesn't matter. And those who don't make mistakes do nothing. Okay, that is the thing. That's what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the site's pretty messy, David. I'm sure you've noticed. Like, I have a lot to do on it, really. Um, yeah, I. It, it's not. You know, it's usable as we've got it at the moment it's usable um and there is everything's working there is a purpose to it and it works so like as kevin says uh, lots of times like keep things keep things really simple you know mm. trying to do too much this is the probably the biggest hurdle with um some of the course creators they're trying to do too much on their site i still been doing this. yeah but i've been doing this for decades and it's kind of like all I use is I don't even use assignments and I, I, I've only started recently to start doing, thinking about using the lives, but I just have, I just have a video and I just have text. That's okay. it. Yeah. You know, and it can be that simple and people sometimes putting assignments in now, I've noticed myself, even with the marketing course, it's like, I'm getting questions back. Do I have to do this video is it compulsory. It's like, you can get a ton of questions back. Be really careful with setting compulsory assignments because you, <laughs> Sabrina knows this because I had to go through all the assignments when I first run the marketing course. And it was like, oh my God, I've made a rod for my own back. You need to have the time to do that. And how much yeah. are you charging for the course? Is it practical? These are things that need to go through your head. So if you can automate as much as possible, that's the key. That way yeah. you can go off on holiday and it will still, my courses on my main site are, you know, I can leave them. I, yeah. I don't touch them. I can just go on holiday, come back and it's making me money while I sleep, which is what we all want. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm setting up, I've just set up a membership as well. It's uh, totally in better stage, but I mean, watching how the way you did the marketing course and things like that has, has really kind of inspired me and things to do like as well. So um, I have to say the marketing course was brilliant. I knew SEO existed. I didn't really know much more than that. And I'm almost a year doing it. How, how crazy is that like? So all of the things that we did in the marketing course were, were really useful. It's just, yeah. it's such basic stuff, but you don't know what you don't know, you know? Yeah, that's it. It's easy, so. isn't it? Sabrina yeah it's just follow the steps you know step by step really it's it's great yeah. I totally recommend it it would cost a fortune if you were to do it if you were to pay for it like really so yeah in, in the real world but in we're the in world, the yeah. world so yeah yeah you guys are great <laughs> all right let's jump into let's jump into your site then do some screen sharing feel free to jump in at any time Sabrina if you've got a question to ask uh, I'll put stuff back to you but it's okay. all uh, very easy here we go so here we have we have the site here we have uh sabrina and killian's site so this is this is ingles con killian so yeah. nothing wrong with this site it's just a little bit um confusing with lots of stuff going on and it kind of things spread out you probably know this yourself sabrina yeah. it's like massive spacing with things with this sort of stuff, if we can keep it all really compact, it's it's it looks better visually, as you, you're going to see. Uh, but it works, you know, it works. The site goes through, and it's all good. I quite like the way you did this. This was quite good. Um, I've given you two examples of this, but there is a problem with this, as you're going to see later. Okay. Um, not like this, but when we go into mobile devices. Ah, so, okay. 
yeah so we got um i think you've added a, a couple of new bits to this page i don't remember no what be... happened is this page is the enrolled page and then the unenrolled page i had updated which i think is a little better than this one but probably not much <laughs> but um maybe that's what you mean i don't know yeah all right i got you all right yeah you've pushed this up and things yeah i did that a couple of weeks ago and the intention was to to transfer it over to the enrolled page but I'm going to wait until you work your magic, do it all together. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go that far, Sabrina. <laughs> I don't know, not better than I'm doing. So <laughs> so we got, um, there was a few things that sort of stood out to me. There was kind of like, this is floating here. Um, it would be better if it was, this is like contact, We're getting people to buy into the course courses um, mm. or membership, but you know, it can be different for different people. But there was a kind of few bits that were kind of, going around there was also no uh and this was a big one for me it's um it's one of my little things that niggles me is when font fonts change and there's um big size differences between certain fonts and things mm. so with that in mind this is the first thing i do so like not only do i show you what i've done but i show you why i've done it and i think that is probably more important than actually seeing the end result because it means that you can go off on your own and you can have that thinking so i've created what i always do is i like to create a little um simple color palette and a uh, font choice that i okay. choose because i see you've used lato but there's a few different fonts scattered mm -hmm. in inside <laughs> so you can make your life so much easier if you have a little color palette to work from so you know the colors that you're going to use throughout the site and you can change tones of those main colors as, as i'll show you um, and also to set yourself with a font so lato works really well with some of the smaller text that you've used in here yeah and so i've kept it as later because i don't want to go you know like i said i try and take a light approach to this what you're going to see i've done is completely different to what you've got but trust me it's pretty much the same it's just changing a few colors maybe changing a background image and changing and tightening up the font other than that it's pretty much the same so it shows how you can get a completely different look with just a few little extra elements. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what I've done for your site here. So I've got, I'm gonna to have to open some of this up. So I've got stuff here. Uh, this was a really nice photo, of both of you. So I've kind of put you together and I've used that in a graphic later. And, um, but it'd be good if you got a photo done with both of you in it. So you haven't yeah. got more it together because things like the light go differently that's why i've made it black and white there kind of a semi-tone <laughs> because the light light changes um i also looked for some and i didn't use some of these but i looked for some uh, png files so guys if you are not very good at using things like photoshop or pixel r that's pixlr.com which is like a photo editing site then you can find already cut out images inside of something like pixabay so i'm going to jump to pixabay let me just stop my share and jump and you into can also it. use canva as well yeah you can if you've got the pro version of canva i'm going to be showing mm -hmm. that if you've got the pro version of canva you can go in and uh, basically make the background invisible yeah so it's like the background that you've got in your on your webcam there behind you, apart from the plant, um, you could easily remove that color from behind you because mm -hmm. there is. A, but you need the pro, you need the professional version of Canva yeah. to be able to do that. So we're trying to find things for free. Pix, Pixel R is really good because you can cut yourself out, and move yourself from the background. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. I'm, yeah, Pixel R, it's free. Um, I don't you. I, it's the closest thing to Photoshop I found. So I've used that as a lot of powerful tools. It's absolutely free. I use Photoshop just because it's so much quicker for me to, to do. Uh, but you can do it all in Pixel R as well. And we've done videos on Pixel R. So I'm going to show you in um, Pixel Bay now. There will be search for. I'm going to type in um, people in here. So 
up the top, these are all paid for, but these are all free down here. Now, what we can also do is we can look in here under images and then we can look for color and you can choose transparent. So what that will do is we'll give us up search results with every image with a transparent background. So a transparent background means that you could put it on a page and any colors or images you've got underneath will show through. So this is really handy on Pixabay. It's got it built in, click go. And this is now giving us all these images that are on transparent backgrounds. So all this background is transparent. So if you put that in your site, any color that you've put on the blocks behind it, they sure. will show through. So really powerful, just like, and that's yeah. where I got this image from. So it's something people don't look for when they're looking for images online. They might want to use something and they're like, I want to get rid of that background. Yeah. But Pixabay has already got that built into it. And there's loads of images there that you could, there we go. That's that image there that that's I've cool. got on here. I've just cut away the desk a little bit. So you can get those. So just to sort of show you that, the other thing is Canva, which Sabrina was talking about. A Canva's great. And especially if you set up a template and we're going to look at that later because there's something else with the site that I need to show you. And that is if we go into responsive mode. So if I don't know if you saw this earlier, Sabrina, but if you ha have Chrome open, you right hand click, go down to inspect. You're going to get this little tab appear, probably yeah. locked to the side. If you click here, you can go to responsive mode. Uh -huh. OK, no. Yeah. So you just that. click inspect. Let me just do it again, just so it's clear. Right hand click inspect. Little toggle. Okay, so basically the same as if you're inside the site checking. It's the same thing, no? Or it's it's more advanced. Okay, cool. You can do it in the site like that, but mm -hmm. this is really advanced because you can check on different devices. Wow. Okay. So it's going to give you what it looks like on all the different devices so this is what i standardly use to oh, wow enjoy. yeah because sometimes inside the site you may check it looks okay and then when you come out you know and you, you try and do it in your own phone or something there's letters yeah because it doesn't or... give you it doesn't give you the exact it gives you a, a mobile size i'm not sure what the size yeah. is but it gives you a mobile cut down so it shows the flow generally that's good enough because you can look yeah. through it and see but i like to use this it one it's quicker I don't have to jump. I I don't act, and this is a big one. If you jump to showing the mobile and you and you make a change in there, while yeah. it's a mobile view, it can get locked in. Yeah. And if it gets locked in, you kind of like you could have more problems. So it's good using the mobile to make tweaks. So like for instance, if I saw this was out, like this line spacing here, I could go into the mobile version, tighten it up and then it would be all right across devices. So it's kind of mm -hmm. using both, but this is really good. But this is the point I was gonna bring you. One is the line spacing. This is something that people do all the time because they don't, they don't need to check it. So what someone will do is they'll do a long line of text and what will happen in mobile is it will wrap. Uh -huh. But because they've, left the line spacing because it didn't show because it was one line then if the line spacing is too big there can be massive gaps between gaps, the line yeah. spacing or too or too tight <laughs> yeah. so i'll be showing that in a second anyway but this is the thing i was going to talk about as we scroll down it's all good hopefully you haven't corrected this i haven't done anything right <laughs> <I promise>. okay <laughs> so, this is all good look we've got all our images they're all nice and then as we get to the bottom and we get to, mm. oh, no, it's fine there. What's happened? Didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, you can see here that, there we go. See this space here to here? Uh-huh. Um, look at yours. Ah, uh, it's different. Different see, size. I wouldn't even see that, to be honest. I, I <laughs> know, but, but you, so you bad I am. know about it because... Yeah. A major reason that you need to know about it is that you could be doing that throughout other courses. Hey, hold on, let me just, I'm sure there was another page I looked at and it was wildly out on the <laughs> sizes. Probably. So the key here is 
to make sure that you're working to the same size. So whenever you're doing, when you're uploading images, so you'll take images on your mobile phone and, uh, or a camera. So you might, you know, you might take one on a camera, oh, that looks good. And then on a mobile phone, you take another one, you get those images and you just upload them and it's like, oh, they look good and it's fine. But when you, when you see them, you might set the size, but as soon as they come down to be responsive, they can jump down in different sizes. So some can be big, mm -hmm. some can be small. And the way you can avoid this is to, you could use Canva. So you could use Canva to set a base size for it. So what I always say, let me go in and open Canva up and share again. A little tip. Use a template. So I did one for uh, Lynn Cow. She wanted some uh, video cards. I saw the sign familiar. I think I, I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? She, she yeah. did this. So you can, um, you can do the same. What I like to work with, they do give you a size. I think it's um, 480 by 860 or something for course cards. Mm -hmm. But what I do, and this is this is my key tip to you, keep everything 1920 by 1080 for course cards, videos. If you're shooting in videos at HD, and hopefully everybody is, then if you keep that size, the ratio of a video in HD is the same size in ratio as the course card. Okay. So you sell one template and you can reuse it. So if you're going to do that, you can go create design, go down to the video template here, just click that. And that's going to give you this. So now if you have an image on your desktop, you can just pop it straight into here. So you can just take a photo and let me just grab a, grab an image. If I can find one, good. Okay, so I got some some surfing images there. So I'm going to drop this in here. There we go. And now what I can do is I can get it and I can crop it in that area, mm -hmm. and then that can be my course card. So if I want to create another one. Obviously, I put some graphics over the top. You can use text and do all that cool stuff. You know, if you're doing a sale or something, drop that in there. And then if you're going to create a new one, you can just duplicate it. So you can yeah. add a page and then you can just add a new page in there. So you can keep adding different images inside here and you can export them out. So you can just do a download. So then, David, you put this on video. Um, so this would be, for example, for an intro or something or? Yeah, I mean, you could use the video feature in here, but you can also just export. Just download I mean, as a PNG. No, you're, Sabrina, you picked me up there on that. I thought I got away with it, but I haven't. So I need to <laughs> create, create, create a design. I'm going to go custom size, and then I'm going to choose 1920 by 1080. There we go. So that's going to give me a proper um, canvas sheet like this okay. so then i would do the same i could come in there i was wondering why it didn't give me the duplicate there so then i can go across here and i can add some cool graphics let's go and add this is kind of like take that um, let's change the color to something like that take that do it this is a bit like um like Lynn site. So oh man, some... you can tell you've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you you can just put it in there like that, move, you know, move that background image wow. and put text over the top. So you know, so just drop that in there. So once you have that, you can then drag other images in. So I can come in here, I can duplicate this page out. I can go into here and go, okay, I quite like this sort of pinky color. And then I'll get rid of, detach the image from the background, uh, bring in a new image, something like that. That's how you get rid of the image in the background. Oh man, yeah, I've been using Canva for nearly a year and I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> and so you put that in there. And then if I want that at the back, I can right hand click and I can just send backwards or I can wow. send to back. And instantly you have these. And of course they're now downloadable. So I can select this as JPEG. And I can say, right, I want to export them all, which will be the page names. 
and or I can go, I'll just export this one today. I click done, download, and that will pop up in my download folder. So I can reuse it. But the good thing about this is one, it speeds up your production time, keeps things consistent, and yeah. also makes it makes the size exactly the same for each of the images that you're doing. Good. So good to know. you're gonna need you're gonna need to check your site in responsive and make sure none of the images are different sizes. If they uh -huh. are, you're gonna have to um, either resize them or use this technique to do it. Okay, great. So you're saying that you downloaded that one. So then in the future, you could upload it again and just make whatever changes you wanted, right? Well, I don't need to because I can just it's there, yeah. let's go back. Yeah, I mean, if I just- um, and change. Yeah, if I just save it, if I just automatically Canva will, will save I'll it for you yeah yeah so i can go back into it if it's i don't even know where it is will have saved it um probably need to refresh in all your designs probably yeah it's just in there i think it's that one so there it is yeah so then you've got a whole thing so it's really good idea to set these kind of templates up. I don't do it using Canva, but I do do it with um, all the stuff I do for everything else I work for. Like if I'm doing, um, I'll sh quickly show you, I have a paint-based template inside of Photoshop. So I don't use Canva, I use Photoshop or Illustrator. Mm -hmm. But Canva's fantastic because it's easy to use. Everybody loves it, and it's really yeah. easy to put things together. If you're like me and you do like photo retouching and these kind of things, this doesn't cut the mustard. So I need to use professional uh, programs, and that's why yeah. I use Illustrator or Photoshop. So my Photoshop, but I'm still working from a template. You know, whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing, if like for Zenla stuff, we have so many different things. Like we have the new Zenla, the new features. A template we have the arsenal the templates you know the course templates yeah and i need to be able to i can't reproduce those every time i need to be working from a template to do it yeah absolutely. So, yeah that's so, better yeah so that's what what i do with it um photoshop's quite a heavy program so it's not here, here it is so it's yeah opening. i need to i need to do that I'm, I'm guilty of going in and you know changing things because i like playing around with canva and stuff but i need to just work from you know be better at the branding and work from the same colors and designs and stuff yeah i mean you know it's uh it's easy to miss these things but i promise you if you start using templates more doing it for everything it's going to speed up your work and keep things yeah and it looks better yeah yeah so it's like here i've got like the new new features you know for stuff that we're doing um i've got all these templates that are set up in here that we can i can just go in and edit these um how i like they're all under one file but it's photoshop that's exactly the same as you working with uh canva and setting up these templates so guys you guys that are watching this is a massive time saver it will keep things consistent um, especially the sizes and it's all there you know and i tend to work with my biggest tip is to work with 1920 width by 1080 width um, height um, use that for course cards for background images use as big as you can because when you upload them into the system the system will resize it to the maximum size it can so people get confused they're looking like what's the exact size for that what's the exact size for this i don't work with those sizes i don't even know what they are because i always work with 19 20 10 80 for everything all my course images everything i use the same one for my videos and then for background images i use an image that's over 3000 width because i know the zen the system will automatically crop it in or to that size so i don't have to worry about any of that so people get overly stressed about what's the exact size to get that in there what it, why doesn't the top and the bottom show and these things it's like make the image as big as you can within reason and just make sure that from the edge to there that's what you want to fit in the picture and then just upload it or crop it using zender's crop tool 
in there. If it's a nice big image, it will still remain sharp. It's the biggest problem people have. They do low resolution images. So they'll be like 600 wide and the Zenless system will automatically resize it to 1200 and it becomes blurry. So you need yeah. good quality images. On Pixabay, you're gonna find that Pixabay gives you images to download at different sizes. So in here, if I'm downloading this, I always go for the highest one, okay? Okay. And then I drop it into my Photoshop or your Canva template and resize it. I could do it at that if it's a course card, but I might wanna use this later for a background image. So if I downloaded it at this size, then it's gonna be just on point, but for people that have got bigger monitors, it might become blurry. So I always do it the biggest I can download it. Okay. Just a little tip. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, so that's that camera. Right, so let me show you next what I have done in here then. So that was images, that's all about images. So I had the image sizes here and these were the two that I was looking at. So if I have a look at this image, and we have a look at the properties of the image. My husband, Killian, the Killian in English, Killian doesn't even like this photo. <laughs> I think it's great. He's I like, like, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, we need to go um, and get some professional photos done, really. But yeah, it's fine for now, you know. I, I like it. I like this image. But you can see it's 2048 by 1125. If you look at this, these are the original image sizes that you had. Okay. And you can see the ratio is out. Look, 737 by 405. Completely different sizes. <laughs> okay. Which oh, is fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. This is what most people are doing, Sabrina. Don't. Yeah, this. I think they're mobile photos like. Yeah, it's just probably taken with different devices. So you might have set the, it's really easy on a phone to set the, the quality lower and then put it higher on, an, on the, you know, on the next shot or something. And then you find mm -hmm. it's a different size. And you sometimes you don't, you don't even notice, you're like looking at it and you're like, oh, but that's the same ratio, you know? Yeah, it looks like, the same. <laughs> it looks the same, look, I'm jumping between them. But if I make this really big like this, and then I jump between them, completely different sizes oh, wow, yeah so i redid these at this size so they're exactly the same size as each other okay yeah? uh -huh. so again you can use canva so just throw them in canva um, and it's fine so that is image sizes so it's something definitely to bear it's going to help a lot of people out sabrina spending yeah. a bit of time on this because most people are doing this you know yeah without uh, even realizing like me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it happens so what i also did and you can do this in camera as well is you can take an image and you know like when you're setting a background image you can put a tint color over the top i vaguely know that can be done but i've never done it yeah <laughs> all right well it's really really easy to do um, but you can also if you wanted to you could set your own tint color so if you're cool. using something like Canva, you could go, you could drop this image in there and then you could put this color over the top and then you can set an opacity for it to show through. So you can create your own bleed through, which can be handy. And I've, I've done it and I'll, I'll show you that later. Yeah, but, that's much nicer than just let, you know, having to fade it into kind of blandness. Yeah. yeah. And also it means if you're using, you know, you could use multiple colors in here, whereas Zener only allows you to use one flat color and then mm -hmm. knock it back. So this was one of the colors that I picked and I didn't produce the branding sheet. So I'm going to have to just show it to you on through. Um... Okay. Let's How see. did you put the color on top of it, David? What did you use? You, I use Photoshop. So I yeah, okay. dropped, um, I dropped an image I dropped the image in there and then I just put a layer on top and changed the opacity, but I'm pretty sure that you can do that in inside Canva. Canva. I'm gonna jump into Canva. We got loads of time. Right, so right, I just wanna show you this branding sheet. So for you, uh, I've set up these colors. So we're gonna use black, we're gonna use white. We've got this gray here. 
And then we're going to use these blues. So these kind of gum metal kind of blue colors. Yeah, I like them. Bluey, bluey silver. But we also have these side colors here that we can use as well. <clears throat> so it's up to you. You can use, you can say, right, I'm going to use these as my main flow through the site. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to, going to use these kind of little pickup colors, just to kind of pick. Vary pick a up. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can oh, go. Yeah. You could change it a bit more. You could go even more into the oranges if you wanted to. You could change these to more of a grey instead of a bluey grey. Um, but the thing is to set a palette up. So if you've mm -hmm. got a palette set up, then you know. I'm going to send these to you afterwards, Sabrina, anyway, with the colour breakdowns as well. So you need to need to know the colours. Know the numbers, well. yeah. Yeah. So the other thing I straight away do is take my font. So I say, right, what am I using for the body font when I'm using Lato for body? So it's mainly all the copy. Mm -hmm. And then what am I using for my titles or my super titles, really big ones, or my sort of subtitles or the small headings? So I chose Montserrat. The reason I chose Montserrat is it gives you a lot of choice of font type in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's got, nice as well. Yeah, you've got the styles. You can go medium. You get There's tons in there. You can go medium, bold, light. You can go lighter. You can go bold. You can go black. Um, there's, there's tons. And I've also set a line spacing as well. So I said for all the sizes, I'm going to make sure that the line spacing is two pixels above the font size. So if I've got Lato in at 16, the line spacing is going to be 18. It's going to go two above it. Okay. If I've, got it in at 45 i'm going to go three i'm going to go two above it again so it's 47 so okay. that way i've set myself a standard so if you've just got this depending on how detailed this branding sheet is if you've just got this you can independently work on different pages and you don't even have to refer back to any of the other pages because you've got that information got yeah so it means you're really quick but you're not just quick you're being consistent through the site yeah so i'm hope hopefully that makes sense but i'm gonna yeah, say it absolutely it's, it's fantastic <laughs> you just, and the colors are lovely one uh, question with the lines facing so whenever you go into the settings and you check your you're choosing your your size of your font instead of for example if 46 well the line spacing should be if you have 46 the line spacing should be 48 right yeah, Does that make sense? But, um, but this is just what I've set it. You you might yeah. decide you want a bit more space between it. So you might say, oh, actually, and you might want to do it on a on a tight level. So you might say the titles are going to have a line spacing of this much. The subheadings are going to have a line spacing of this much. You know, you can go as you can go as far as you want to go with this. Stuff. Yeah. It's just we're trying to create a sheet that makes it really easy for you to reference without having to go back and open another page up. Because yeah. you've only got to work on one page and you after you're working on one page, you'll you'll probably remember these. And the next time you do it, you'll just go, oh, it's 45. That's what you won't even have to refer to the sheet because you'll you already know it. Yeah. But, but plus it makes everything look far better because <laughs> it's much more uniform. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's that's the key here. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to keep everything uniformed and kind of in control. A lot of sites, when you look at them, you're kind of thrown into a little bit of confusion. And the mm -hmm. only reason that's happening is because things are different sizes and they're kind of, your eyes doing this with it. It's like mm -hmm. a it's like, where is it? You people want to sort of read and have real clear direction on size sizes that are happening. Generally people yeah. like to see bigger titles and they like to see things going down like a funnel. If you're reading text, it's kind of yeah. like that. Um, also the break. So your line spacing in here, um, we have, and you have a line spacing of 56, which is mm -hmm. huge. So I would say if I just try that rule of 32, you know so yeah. two above that this is on your live site by the way so yeah i'm not going to save it but that's <laughs> if, if you do you know so it's like even things like this you might this is quite nice spacing in here and that, that was the is, original spacing from the block yeah just even that, words. yeah even that see it probably wouldn't work with this if i did it 17 it still works maybe it's a bit tight might need to go to yeah. three for that one or 
you know but you can push it all up as well in yeah. these things and this is this is kind of you've used this um this is what i didn't like was the color that was used for the background in here with mm. the red going around the outside On you didn't these, like the red no it can't like to me it, it's um it's a really kind of funny color against those backgrounds so it wasn't sort of jumping yeah. out i was trying to kind of i suppose highlight it a little bit but of course not knowing much about colors mm. I mean, if we if we just changed, even changed it to a white. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's much and, nicer. Yeah. Yeah. And because you've got that blue in there, you will watch these colors that. But this is the great thing. Once you've got your branding sheet together and you've got yeah. like a, you, you can play around with those colors. And if you just stick to the colors, you yeah. know, try different variations of the colors, see which one really attracts you Works. yeah but don't go off of the color palette if you as soon as you go off the color palette everything's becoming random yeah i'm the type of person who would wear like spots with stripes and stuff i don't really you know in terms of fashion sense so when it comes to design and sites it's kind of the same but yeah it totally makes sense what you're saying because i don't want to have a site that has like really brash colors and stuff like that either i want it to be nice and clean and yeah which is the colored scheme that you have chosen is, is perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, you see what I'm getting, at. but it's all right. I mean, if you like to wear different, like, um, you know, spots and all these things that can be, that can be put into the site, you know, like just think if we had a background color of there of, of just um, like black and uh, black and white spots. And then there was like an overlay of white and 90% opacity. So uh -huh. it just showed through. So you can still get your own character um, into yeah. the site and still keep it nice and clean. It doesn't mean you have to stay on this route of like rigidly, oh, this I've got to use this background and I've got to use this. You can still put emphasis in there because remember that our sheet allows for that. So if you wanted mm. to use black and white polka dots, you could. You They're part of the branding sheet. We're not going yeah. off of it. Yeah. So it's like that that kind of thing so let's us uh, show you here this is what i meant about the overlay on any of the background images and you've got a background image in here we've mm -hmm. got this background overlay if you turn that on there you can go and set an overlay color ah so you can go and choose whatever color you like roll through here i don't think i noticed that before yeah and you can change also sabrina change the opacity here I did. I mean, I played around with all the buttons, but I didn't. Don't think I actually realized that you could change the color. Yeah, that's only on the blue block there. Yeah. The background, um, but it works. And don't worry, I haven't saved this, so when I close <laughs> it, I'm just going to leave it. There you go. I'll be changing it to whatever you do anyway. It doesn't matter. Save it to right. I don't know. <laughs> right. So that is our kind of thing. Now I have the other thing was our logo. Mm -hmm. This was something. This is the logo that you had on the site which i downloaded you you sent me a high res one i didn't use it i okay. actually took um i took the small one and i cut it out to give it a transparent background because this is something that a lot of people want to do but they kind of don't know how to do it it's all about that transparent background so if yeah. i come into the site here you've got this light gray but then you've got this logo you can't read it you can see it, yeah. Yeah. So we need to make it bigger. Uh, you're mm -hmm. you're wasting a lot of space because your logo has got all this space around the outside. Yeah. And it would be good if it was cut out so that this is all transparent. Yeah. And we can do that because we can do that using our... Um, removal of the color around the outside of it so we could take yeah. it into something like uh all right i'm going to try this right this could go disastrously wrong <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens i'm going to jump into pixabay so i'm just going to stop the share and i'm going to try and show you how you can cut an image out um pixel r sorry i thought i had turned off the opt-in i know you don't like them <laughs> oh yeah 
yeah the pop-ups they uh it it pop-ups are good the problem is that a lot of people nowadays um have pop-up blockers so yeah it, they can be annoying yeah it can be but also it's like if you have an actionable button and they click it the pop-up blocker won't stop it because they've actioned it but if it just pops up the pop up pop, pop up blocker <laughs> will stop it yeah so if you want to guarantee more people coming through i prefer to turn it off it drives me nuts yeah i had it on for a few weeks there just because we're starting group classes but i actually should have turned it off already oh right okay okay so there's a so look um sabrina we've got pixlr.com okay and there's two versions there's quick and easy graphic design and there's a uh, pixel e advanced photo editor <laughs> trust me right i would I'm go for the quick the... and easy yeah <laughs> no, i'm gonna yeah. go for the gonna go for the easy one so this is my account this is where i cut out um lynn um she had her she had lots of stuff going on in the background and i cut her out of this um this account so this is kind of a test account so what i want to do is i want to take your image and show you how we can take this now your image is already you got this image done and it was already done for you it's mm. already on a transparent background so i'm going to get this so that i can flatten it that way i can show you what's going on right yeah and this is where we could have a problem because i'm not used to this program <laughs> ah there we go Nothing like trying things out live, David. Eh? I'm trying it live. <laughs> this is this is a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> All right. So let me flatten the image off. Um, I'm hoping it's all going to be the same as uh, Photoshop. Here we go. So flatten image. All right, yeah, good. So I basically flatten these two images. So if you had an image like this, you got this image. Uh, if you're getting an image done professionally, tell them to do it the as transparent and transparent yeah yeah tell them to do it because you don't want that hassle of um doing that so uh right so how we do this right there so if i choose a little tool here it's an ellipse tool i should be able to drag this out and i should be able to move it to go around there that looks nice mm -hmm. and i should be able to inverse this selection select inverse selection and then i can hit the backspace and now i've created wow. a cutout so this That's brilliant because yeah it means but, it still comes up and, yeah yeah so any color i put underneath it let me just put an empty layer in this is how easy it is to work with this program this is what i mean it's really familiar to photoshop so i i don't mind using this and even trying it live and messing up so i'm going to change this to red over here i'm going to use the bucket tool and I'm going to drop that in. Cool. So you can see. Yeah, you definitely can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Right. <laughs> yeah, in that red. Yeah. That's um, really cool. So let me delete that layer out. So if I wanted to do this for my site, I can go in and use the crop tool here, and I can crop this around my image to give me wow. maximum. I don't want to use any of that space outside here. It's not going to be yeah. used. So I come in here and grab it all like this. And then I think I can switch tool and it should do it. And now I can export this out. So if I go to file um, and export image as PNG, PNG, mm -hmm. if you export as a JPEG, JPG, JPEG, mm -hmm. it will not carry an alpha. Um, this is the What's alpha. An alpha? Uh, okay. alpha is the transparent area okay okay so if you think of images images uh, for web on on the screen are rgb which is red green and blue okay mm -hmm. jpegs save the color channels out but they don't save what's called an alpha so when you're saving out as a dot png file you're saving it as rgba alpha channel so that oh, alpha okay. channel is that invisible area. That's all you need to know. Now, all you need to know really is just save it as a PNG if you want to save the transparency. So if you do that, and it should, if you've got transparency in there, Pixel R will automatically say, oh, you want to save it out as a PNG file. It won't okay. even ask you. So you can go quick exports image. And there it is there. So if I open that in my 
folder, you're going to see that I have it here. That is the image with a transparent background. So if I drop that on my desktop and I jump into your site, and just demo that it works. Let's go and I'll, I'll add it to a page. Again, I'm not putting this into the page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I blow, blow the live site up. Don't worry. I don't just anybody looking at it, David. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> You guys are very trusting to let me in your site. You really are. <laughs> you have that kind of face. <laughs> Trustworthy face. Yeah, this is really cool, though, because if you're using like PNG files, you're going to see later I've cut you out. You can put colors behind you and it's still going to show. So if I go into um, here and I drop mm -hmm. that image in, so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go upload. I should better find this, should be on my desktop. There it is. And I click open. So I'll um, have it in there now, right? Yeah, you will have it yeah. in there after I've done this. Yeah. Perfect. So you can delete it out. But there you go. So you can that go in really there. Cool. And yeah. And you so you can bring it down here. But the, the main thing here, here is the color is like the colors on the background will just show yeah. through. So you can put it straight into the page. So yeah. It's really yeah, cool because so, you can put it in you know strategic places yeah and really good for like floating elements like you're going to see um like i'll show you because i'm now going to jump into to what we've done okay. all right ready so with all the stuff we talked about so far this is uh where we see what a mess i've made of it all I'm so, let, <laughs> let's go and have a look so I'm going to open this page up. So this is what I've done. This was the same page, but I've just changed things around a bit. And you can wow. see straight away that we've got a much bigger logo here. And I put it on white, not on gray. You can actually read it. <laughs> yeah, you can read it now. Now, right. Okay. So biggest thing here is by default, Zendla saves the logo for more long logos. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got that problem happening with your site. Not really because of the size of the image it's more a case that you can't change that size so this in here we haven't got the option to be able to change the logo size at the moment but it's coming we're gonna have yeah to but if i put in what you just did in there it's going to be at least better looking no no because it still keep it the size the same size ah, what, I've done, okay, okay. what i've done here is i've actually added what's called css code oh God, really right. <laughs> easy to do i'm going to do it for you anyway but it's really easy to do just take code and you put it into the global includes so i'm going to do it on your live site you're going to let me know if you're happy with it and then i can actually implement it okay fantastic is that right perfect perfect right let's do this right so we're working <laughs> on the live site so what i'm going to do first of all is i'm going to go into the site settings and then i'm going to go into um sorry the branding and then i'm going to go into this i'm only going to make this change the rest of the changes you can do so where i've got yeah. my logo with all this white around the outside we're going to put in the new logo okay so this is going to happen on the live site so i'm going to click this we're going to grab this open it up and it's now in there so let's have a look at the site page now refresh there we go. Yeah. Much better. So already we can see it, but we can mm -hmm. go even more with this. We can use what's called a little bit of CSS code to actually make it bigger. So I don't want to get into this too much, but we can use CSS code to do it. So to give you an idea, and I'm not going to cover it here, but I'm going to do it after we finish Sabrina. Okay. So I can do it for you. But if we take something like a logo, we can actually set it to be bigger like this wow but i'd probably do it to something like that i can take that code and i can copy it notice i've just taken this this is using that same inspector right hand clicking inspect the same one that we changed the device sizes mm -hmm. i can take this code here copy it if I refresh this page, it isn't set on the page. This is just to test it. 
Hmm. So if I'm happy with that size, I can go into your site settings. I can go on the global includes and inside of here, I can put that code. I need to put style in here and the code style at the end it's really easy to do guys if you want to know how to do this go into the ninja tricks course it's in there now i click update that's been applied so if i now go to your site and i hit refresh you're now going to get this new size or not <laughs> i love it i'm alive um, love it all right um in style at the bottom there's an extra forward slash or no no that's fine that's, that's fine, fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about coding. <laughs> there we go. So there we go. Uh, sometimes you need to put an important tag because then it overrides the system tag. So that's what we've done. We've just added yeah. that in there in style and it's come across. Now, we do need to change, drop the menu down so it resembles more like this. And that takes a little bit more work. So, but it does mean now that you could change this background color and that's going to be cut out lovely in there. Yeah. But I'm going to go back one here, Sabrina. I'll send okay. you this code anyway, and we can just make it perfect after the live. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go back to what it was before because I don't want to mess the site up at this stage because I need to move things down. But that's how we can do it. So what I've got here is what I want to do. Now, I if I was to change the dynamic header here for this duplicate page, it would ripple through the whole site. So because I didn't want to do that, I actually designed this up myself in here. Okay. Just to show you, because I don't want to destructively work with a site that I'm just playing around. I, I would say constructively, not destructively. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to destructively. Yeah. So it's working in a non-destructive manner. So I'm not, I'm not affecting your live site. You'll even see that the page that I've got in here under your pages that it's actually unpublished. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't so want that. it, I don't want it to pick up in site ranking results and things like that when we haven't pre you haven't approved it and assigned yeah. it to your pages. So it's just working in a safe way. This is what I do with all the live builds. We work very safely to to um, make sure it's not messing the site up. So all the content in this page is the same mm -hmm. as your page here but it's just okay. been compacted down. Um, we've used those colors that you saw in the branding sheet. So this one's going for a kind of more bronzy silver. So yeah, we've got this right. thing in the background we've got here. So if you click this, we've even designed this to make it look using your branding. I must admit, I'm not that happy about this image in the background. I think it's looking a little bit too much like a kind of makeup site. <laughs> 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 but it looks nice you know it's getting yeah. there so if we go down i've still got your course blocks in here there's definitely something we can do with these as well um but it's okay for now and then we've yeah, got the pictures the are different size as what you were talking about before yeah yeah the yeah. last one's a different size yeah exactly <laughs> um so that's what i was going to point out to you um sabrina so you might want to go in there, set a template up, just re-upload images for all of your uh -huh. course cards. Absolutely. And remember to do it for the SEO course card as well on the SEO. Oh, okay. So again, we have your contact information there. So it's all just a bit more kind of, I'm not looking at it in incognito, am I? I'm looking at the wrong page. You know, I mean, just, you can it, compare the two sites. Yours is beautiful compared to mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's the same content. It's just like adding maybe a background image, making sure the fonts are consistent. It's really yeah, just... Yeah, it looks worth. a lot more professional, David. Yeah, you see how we, if working from that simple branding sheet, you can totally change, resurface the website completely mm -hmm. without breaking anything you've done. I didn't have to add any new content. It was just basically take that block, remove that image, put that tint behind it, put a little block there. But the actual the content's the same. Change the spacing um, to make it a little bit more kind of like running line. So this is the only different font that I've got. And that was just because 
I thought it might be quite nice to. It looks like, very have, elegant, yeah. Yeah, and have it, and the equal sign that you had, it mm. it put me off. I don't know why. It kind of looked like it was. I don't know what it was. It's just when I looked at it, I was like, oh, I don't know why that's in there. It it felt like it should be an equation or something. <laughs> Yeah. See, the thing about it, because in the future, I'm going to have to translate the slide into the site into Spanish as well, because our, our clientele is Spanish. But uh, I have to be careful with the language that I'm using, that it has to be similar, you know, when you can translate it for people who have lower levels. So I suppose I was trying to simplify. But yeah, uh, you're right. It equals is, is better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can do that in a course, but maybe like to have it um on the page yeah i see yeah because you're going to do a spanish version of this same thing well in the spanish version put equal sign no no put... this is this is better it's nicer but i was just trying to keep everything kind of simple and i suppose that's why i stuck in an equals because it's kind of international but yeah it's yeah. Not very nice and i thought what would be quite nice is because you almost have it like a quote so you could you could have these throughout the site you could put mm -hmm. little key things like you know um i'm sure Statements, you come, yeah yeah like you know sort of things like um from uh what is the word from a from a nut a great a great um oak tree can grow or something you know those kind of things <laughs> i didn't make no any... idea what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it don't worry about it. uh yeah so uh anyway so I thought that'd be quite good. You could sort of put them in there, play around with the colours as well. You might want to use this lighter kind of um, colour coming through. And um, and again, consistency. So I thought we'd go bold on this and then take this down to light for a little bit of sub subheading on there. Um, yeah, the, the Montserrat is lovely, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, it, and it, it just totally changes it. So here was a good one. Ooh. I actually used a slideshow to do this. I like that. Yeah, I did play around with three blocks of text, like a bit like you've got it on here. Hmm. But that's um, a lot cleaner with the sliding. Yeah, but also gives you room to manoeuvre with it. So if you need to put more in there, you can put more yeah, in. Yeah, and it doesn't look cluttered. Hmm. It's much cleaner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I like to do also is if you've got more than about five um or five five or six of these testimonials is quite a good idea to have a page and have the testimonials on there testimonials page okay yeah create a page and then you can put a little button underneath here and then people can click straight through to it for more testimonials okay mm. yeah mm. so that gives you a lot of flexibility it also keeps it very tight as well um looks yeah. nice and then we've got here so this is the new images at, at the size, wow. but they are the yeah. same. And it's, it's pretty much what you've got already for yours, your site. I'm on the wrong page again. But we're just making more of a point of the thousand professionals from over 100 companies so we're yeah kind of, i mean people don't want to read too much crap you know <laughs> yeah, the, the, I, that, yeah i doubt simple, if people yeah. read this yeah but exactly. they'll definitely read this yeah because it pops out of them yeah it's and, more impactful yeah yeah and you know you've only got to get their attention and by having this bigger you sometimes get people to look at it and go oh actually and then they will read this but if yeah. it's all in the same size there's no there's nothing different going on with it yeah nothing yeah. sticks out yeah yeah you want something that just draws their eye into it <clears throat> some people use color to do that other people use fonts like we have here but we're also trying to keep it clean as well you notice the bottom half of this site is all in the silver and the top half is kind of in the sort of oh, wow thing. i like how it kind of moves at the top I don't know what you call that, but at the very top, it yeah, it kind of yeah. jumps in. Yeah, that was um, yeah, that was another another thing as well. Just a little bit of movement on the page. You'll notice oh, that man, it pulses. Fantastic. So it's yeah, um, I noticed that, but I didn't notice that it jumps in. Yeah, it's when you go off of it and then go back. Oh, wow, to the yeah. Oh, that's so cool. 
<laughs> so I, I wanted to do that, but I didn't. Well, I'm sure I could have found out how to do it if I took the time. But I thought, yeah, and the, the, the buttons at the bottom as well. I was going to ask you about that. How can I make them more prominent? So that's really cool. Yeah, that, I like to put these big blocks in. One thing is on your uh, messenger widget, widget, I know mm -hmm. you followed my tutorial. I should have been um, more specific about certain things. You should have you realized actually... your audience, how basic <laughs> they are. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't that. I just, I didn't notice. I should have noticed because when I did it on, on my site, it did the same thing. But I've got a massive block like this. So I'm not that worried. Um, it gets in the way of the social icons. Ah. So oh, yeah, and they're can... quite small, yeah. There is, a, there is a setting in the widget that allows you to push it from the right hand side. So if you set that at about 200, it will push it away from the social icons. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because I'm just going to copy what you did on my pages. Oh, like... You need to move that <laughs> um, or, or remove it across. But that, I mean, that's good. Uh, so I want to jump into the page itself. I've got a second version here as well, which I want to show you. So I'm going to go into the edit and I'm just going to show you a few of the key things that you need to know. One is the animation. Okay. Wow, the difference between mine and yours is like total amateur and professional. Amazing. Well, it's, I, it's, it's really funny. It's, it's not, there's not much to it. You know, it's like there's, it's just change of color, but you start, the main thing here is you start from that branding color block. You get colors mm -hmm. that work to get. If you can't, if you're like, oh, I don't know what colors to pick, have a look around on the internet, see what other sites are doing. See, oh, they're nice colors. And then just sort of emulate those, you know? Yeah. For um, the, actually for the membership page, which is the newest page that I did a couple of weeks ago, I took another page that I really liked and I kind of almost copied it step by step. And, you know, because I really liked what, how, what they were doing. So, um, that's a good idea. That's, that's yeah, because I mean, I was just basically throwing them together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's 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 the way to do it. I mean, that's what the um, that's what lots of companies do. Lots of the yeah, Japanese see motorbike. what else is working and. Yeah, I mean, the, you look at the Japanese motorbike industry. I mean, it's it's classic. Not so much now, but it, it was built on uh, ripping off um, <laughs> lots of the other companies. You know, the companies would spend like a, um, tons of money producing these amazing designs that happens with cars as well, where they'd spend all oh, tons and tons of money developing this perfect shaped car and all these things. And then suddenly they would come out with sort of Japanese or Chinese versions of these cars and they would be following the shape. They spent no money on development. Uh -huh, it's just copied. <laughs> it's just, it happens. It's just the world. Uh, yeah, so inside here, to make the animation happen, this is really cool. I love the animation features inside Zen because they've made it so easy. Yeah, it looks really professional. It takes it to another level. like It does, and it's at every single level. So you can animate. You can animate this whole block if you wanted to. You've got animation here. You've got animation on a complete row, so everything in that row. Uh -huh. And you can go across to the settings and you've got animation. So I've got flip X in. Now with animation, don't get too carried away. <laughs> Try to keep it in what, if you like one way of it working, stay with that. that. Yeah. I've seen lots of people with the animation go, oh, animation. And they start animating every <laughs> single thing. <laughs> and your eyes don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, little, like uh, a small amount is, is more really. So like in here, this is really good because when I pick one of these, it will show you what happens. So I've got flip in X. So if I go to bounce left in, you get this happen. Okay, yeah. It's easy. Right? You can set intervals. So like that pulsing button, I've set mm -hmm. an interview of interval of four set of three seconds. So every three seconds, it will repeat the animation. Okay, here. So you can say after interval, after um, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, do it again. Mm -hmm. That's what the interval is. So delay is how much of a delay so someone lands on your page if you've got a delay of five seconds the animation won't happen until they've been on your page for five seconds yeah so that's the difference between these other than that you can just have fun with it so you can go to flash in that's what gives you a flash in um 
again we've got flipping x we've got tons of things tada is one that's used quite a lot so it's yeah <laughs> probably a little bit salesy that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of out of out of sync with the nice elegant page <laughs> yeah, it is yeah and we've got fade as well speaking of fade we have fade in here here we go fade in so you got that mm. it's a little bit quick that fade in for me to be honest but i tend to like the flip x in so flip yeah x, that's nice when it says flip x x uh, in in the 3d world is uh the horizontal okay so if you see y um it's the vertical so we have a flip in what x we have a flip in y so if i do y it does it that way comes down wow <laughs> flipping x does it flipping x flipping <laughs> x, <does yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's that's how it works but this is really good though sabrina because you can you it's could funny. animate this then if you wanted to inside that you could animate this as well so you could do bounce in here so now we've got we've got two animations going on let me just save it and preview you're going to have the main block change and then you're going to have that element changing as well so if i just flick the page up and it'll load it's going to do that and then that's going to bounce as well <laughs> cool so you could so you could layer them on the top now if you want to get really and i want to do a little bit of a tutorial on this because i think it'd be really cool if for instance you wanted something flipping in and then you want something sort of fading up you uh -huh. could set it you could set it so that it does its first uh okay, move in. the delay yeah delay the fading of the first one so make that straight away second one make it one second one after two and so on and then they would come up in series yeah so you could you can really get inventive with this stuff uh -huh. um, that's that's what i love about it but it does just bring the page to life, doesn't it? It really just brings it to another level. Yeah, that's what people want now, like with gamification mm. and interaction on websites. If you can give the impression of the website being sort of like a little bit reactive to what you're doing, people will be like, oh, oh yeah. look, you know? So Yeah, subconsciously, but they're kind of a bit more impressed than they are with just a plane. Yeah yeah there's just and it's built in even things like the slideshow that just goes yeah. around and um, when you pull when you put your mouse over it it doesn't move so it just stay there on that one if if it's a bigger thing then people need that to stop mm. um yeah and that's it really we've got here the forms changed a bit i did this wide but it probably could do with being normal size but i just wanted it to match these corners yeah so that is it really not a lot uh, to it david it's it's lovely <laughs> it's so pretty i love it <laughs> i'm so impressed well, so i've got this new one here that i was kind of like playing around i mean what i like is about it all guys like if you're doing this stuff have fun with it if you've yeah. got the page unpublished play around you know just play around and just have fun with the animation try changing color colors and you're going to be fine but if we go down to this one this is a new version so this is the one we just looked at so this is a new version here it's pretty much the same it's a little bit more washed out but mm. it's cleaner and yeah here it depends we what you want yeah so you've got this going on and here we go i've done the blocks here yeah that's nice too yeah so and the, and that's the same size here so I, I just put the contact form below the connect form um, but this was really good, and this shows you a classic oh, case of cutting out. Bouncing in as well, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. So going into that page, um, this can be refined a bit. I just did it quite quickly yesterday because I wanted to play around with a different version, just to show you how quick it took me to do that. I was going to ask you, yeah. Yeah, that new page probably took me less than fifteen minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd be there for hours. <laughs> I, no, honestly, you wouldn't because you've already got this page. This page took took the longest. Yeah, you um, see, this is going to be my template now, you know. So this is going to, I'm going to be able to just clone and change for each page. Yeah. Which is fantastic yeah. and keep everything uniform. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you can just, yeah, as, as Sabrina said, if you've got the pro and premium, you can save the block out. Guys, if you are using a free version, you can come along here copy the code 
and then paste it into an empty block. And we've got tutorials on that. But you guys are on Pro and Premium, you can just come in and save the block out. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, yeah, this was really good, though, because like by having you cut out there, you could go ahead and just drop an image in the background. So if I, I had this little face one that was. Um, so you see, it sort of shows through. Yeah. So it can be really powerful. And I'll turn that up. And you've got something else going on there. Really yeah. quick, like two seconds, <laughs> it completely changes the whole it look changes. of it. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And the first page, how long did it take you, David? Do you remember? Uh, you, more uh, taking some of the images and things, but it was not long, probably an hour. Wow. Something Thanks like so that. much for doing this. Um, thank you so much. Really. Oh, no, it's all right. I, I thought it was, a, it was a great one to sort of showcase because I think, you know, you might think, oh, yeah, it does look completely different. It does. But really, yeah. there's not a lot difference going on. It's just like the, the text. It's setting that this is the important thing with live builds is like it doesn't really matter i could just show i could take someone's site and i could give them the branding sheet and i could mm -hmm. hand it back to them and then they would create something that would be much better because they've got a consistency running through and this yeah. is the key thing like i've mentioned it numerous times now it's the amount of people that use multiple font sizes for their headings uh, yeah. for their body text spacing if you keep it consistent your site is going to look a hundred times better much better yeah much more professional yeah so i've basically taken what you've done changed it a little bit and that's what you get you know and like you said sabrina now you can take this you know what you need to do yeah it's going to be my top. template yeah yeah That's take it. it start using it but still play around you know is your site make it yours choose maybe different images you know if you want to use um geometric designs and things like that for backgrounds you could do that to really sort yeah. of make it your own um that's it well, so there we have it and i think we are a few minutes early so okay. any other questions sabrina um yeah if while you're on my site go and hop over to the membership page and i'll just uh, if you go into our courses at the top okay there, do you mind oh no 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 absolutely not it's when i have you <laughs> no 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 that's that's what it's okay. all about so if you go to all courses at the top right let me go into let me go to yeah, I actually need to make this page a page of its own. Um, but for now it's in or okay. So the first one there, fast track to English fluency. I think I need to change the name as well. Um, so this is the one that I copied bit by bit, and I thought it looked fine, but compared to yours now, it's just it's it's not a patch on yours, you know. But this was yeah. the one that I thought was probably better, definitely better than the home page. But yeah, so what I can do is um, I'll just be able to use your homepage as a template and just change all the details within it. Yeah, I would. Um, yeah. The colors there, you know, obviously, if you set your branding colors. Yeah, then... it's the same bland colors as I have throughout. So. Yeah, I, and also I noticed that on your on your main homepage, it was like you were using um capitals but i yeah. i you know i do i'm a big fan of using capitals and i tend to probably overuse them but i when i saw when i saw your site i was looking at it and i was like do you know what this is kind of like it's an english site but it's it's softer you know it's got a softer approach to it so that's why i wanted to go upper and lower case yeah yeah it's yeah just, oh my god there's way too much capitals in that yeah, because it it's like capitals like shouting, aren't they? So it's kind of yeah. like really, um, I don't, I, I like, I really like, I think capitals can be used, but you. Yeah, have, they can be useful. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be it's really sensitive with them. Yeah. Some people really don't like, I remember I was doing a live and I was like, can people put their um, chat comments in capitals so they really stand <laughs> out? And I actually had one student kind of leave, leave the course because um, they were really annoyed that, that oh wow that's quite sensitive 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, sorry, don't we won't do it again. But <laughs> maybe I should that is a high level hours. of sensitivity, yeah. <laughs> but it sh- yeah, but it shows you, doesn't it? It shows yeah. you like the impact. When the I look slightest at that, thing, it's like, yeah. I, I like wow, oh, that's an urgent. I've got, I've got. Maybe it's good. <laughs> what have I got way. to do? <laughs> yeah. I've got to sign up for it. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll just say, "Oh my god, this is terrible," and go away, which is what a lot of people do. And the other thing I wanted to ask you was about the the social media icons, but you've answered that without me asking. Is it like making them bigger, making them more prominent? So that's brilliant. Yeah, I would. Um, I'll send you the social media pack. Because what we've done on tutorials might be better for you. Obviously, not as bold and as big as these, but it would actually be quite good to give you a pack of the logos. Yeah. Here, because they, these logos link straight through. Um, with what I've done in, on your site is they are icons, and you can't link in an icon. That's why I've put Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at the bottom. So I want to do another pack. I just didn't have time to do it, but I'm going to yeah. send you that in the pack anyway. Okay, great. That page looks great, by the way. You're doing um, a workshop on that on Sunday, no? Yes, Sunday. Are you coming to that? I can't. Oh, no. well. <laughs> I don't think I on... can anyway, but if I can, I will. <laughs> but you will be recording. It'll be up on there. Yeah, it will be. We'll be putting it onto the YouTube channel. So yeah. it's okay. going to be. So if I miss it, it'll be there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be up there. So you'll see. It's going to help a lot of people out. I had um, John Orion, who's you know, he's he's on the lives quite a lot. Yeah. And he he really wanted he really wanted uh, to be shown how it was done because he's doing a ukulele site and he wants to use the same kind of formatting. So I said, well, okay, great idea. Let's just do it as a yeah. live workshop. Take you behind the scenes. And yeah. um yeah, just have fun with it really. But yeah, I mean, I think you've got enough information to be able to change things, but it can be really interesting. So That's guys, good. you guys that are watching this, um, make sure you go to Ingalls Con Killian now and again, probably give uh, Sabrina like a week or so and see how it's changed. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. The pressure is on you to get it done. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. When I have it now and it's fresh, I still have to finish my marketing homework, David. <laughs> as student i'm on the intros and outros this weekend that's where i am um yeah i was away a lot of uh august so between coming and going i i didn't have the chance um yeah and that was it so in terms of some people say that it's better to have a separate about page about us page is that you know do you really need to have so many things at the top or you know it's a it's a that's a, i mean it's a good question um some people like to do some people like just one page with everything running down on the page, personally yeah. i like to i just like to keep it on track like if people want to know about you then I, i'll put a little bit down the bottom and then i'll go to uh an about us page you can have an about us page but yeah probably with what you're i mean it depends what you're teaching and how much you're going to write if it's a little bit of content that you're telling people about yeah it's not going to be me. yeah people don't want to know about me they want to know about how to access classes and stuff so yeah but, pe- but people do vest in people you know i, I think yeah, it's well, that's really true. miss miss um it's misunderstood i think people buy into other people it's yeah. like even if even if um if there's two teachers and one isn't academically as good as the other but i like them better i'll go with that person yeah Just you know you can bounce off them and you know it depends it depends on the thing it's true and i mean this area is completely saturated as well so anything that makes you a little bit that makes you stand out a little bit is good i suppose so yeah and i I know i'm going off track but um for people who want to translate to a different language as well to have two languages on their site so for me in the future i want to have english and spanish um how are people doing that do you know do you want to use a translator or do you want to actually just, do you want to word it all yourself? Um, a translation server. I would translate it and then I would check it with a native to make sure that everything sounds good, you know? Oh, no. I mean, like um, for like our, oh, I'm going back to my tutorial site again. Oh, it's quite good having a tutorial site to keep bumping, <laughs> bumping against. But, <laughs> um that like I've got here, like any live text in the, when I mean live text, I mean oh, you've got a select language. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, you can go up here, so you can put it in Albanian um, there. Like if you if you can read that, so it, it gives that translation. So I always do it to translator. 
Um, if you want to do a separate site, uh, it's going to be uh, so I wouldn't harder. like to do a separate site. I'd like to have everything on the one site, but then if someone is like, oh, it'd be easier for me to read this in my own language, so they could just click and go straight to Spanish, you know? Like, like do you have there, just the button at the top? The only thing is, if they're in a course, is it going to be in English? The courses are all going to be in English, yeah. Oh, okay, so you... It's only for the pages, the landing pages and stuff, you know? So if people oh, want to read it in Spanish, if oh. their level is lower, just like you okay. have there, no? Okay, so you you might have to create a series of other pages. What I do okay. is try get your site sorted mm -hmm. then set up a duplicate homepage, translate it into maybe Spanish mm -hmm. and take it from there and slowly build it up. Yeah. So that, and then you can connect. So in the menu, you can put um, Spanish and then they could click straight through to that page. Yes. Um, you might want to separate the main dynamic um, menu because it doesn't, because obviously you'd have too many items. It doesn't uh, translate. So you'd have to probably do it as a manual header yeah you could just have a button where they could click you know read yeah, in spanish or, or actually you know what um maybe a simpler route so that you could keep the dynamic header would be to set up a second site call it spanish mm -hmm. and basically clone all your blocks across as pages don't set up any courses in it but just use it as a translation page and then link back to this link back to the courses where you need to that yeah. would work so all they have keep, to do is keep it it would keep it separate then you're you're you've got two sites yeah yeah it's probably I, for my <laughs> little brain it's probably easier if i could just have a button and yeah but that's all you could for example they come to your landing page you want to they want to read it in spanish they click a button and it takes them to the other site that's all no yeah 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 or like yeah, you said just work. keep or just keep it on the one site and just simplify it maybe Add pages yeah have the, the the only the only problem that exists is the top header which is a dynamic area so yeah. it's like you're not going to have two but then you could have a drop down underneath it you could have a drop down under under spanish and then you could have a drop down to all the pages yeah or on every landing page or on every page that i want to also translate to spanish i could just have a prominent button read in spanish click it brings them to another page that's translated into spanish no be the easiest no okay perfect perfect <laughs> all right going totally off topic but <laughs> these are all my little thoughts okay um brilliant no that's good all right i'm gonna have kevin on um in a few minutes so um there we go so that was uh sabrina's site she's happy which is always good um i'm it's gonna be funny when i actually do a live build for someone and they go i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna happen david thanks a million i really appreciate it i really I do Thanks it for having great. me on it. Uh, thanks for letting us demo your site as well. It's brilliant. <laughs> Pleasure is mine. Thanks a million. Talk to you soon. All right. See you later. Bye. Okay. So that was Sabrina. So I think now we're going to have Kevin come up in about eight minutes. So I'm going to have a quick break and um, also send the link to Kevin so he can join. And then we will be back in action. So Kevin's going to round off uh, session one, um, after which I'm going to be back at three o'clock. And we've got a lot going at three o'clock because it's right on three o'clock. We've got Alice Miriam coming in. She's going to do Facebook. So we've almost got a back to back here. We've got Kevin coming in with audience building at 1130. It's in seven minutes time. And then straight after that, at, well, straight after three hour gap, we have Alice coming on for a whole hour. Um, and then we'll pick up again with me at four o'clock. Okay, and we've got Rakesh coming on as well. So pretty busy day today. I'm going to send the link to Kevin and the guys so that it can jump in. So I'm going to pause this for a while and I'll be back very soon. So I'll be back in probably about three minutes. All right, <laughs> speak to you in a minute. Bye.
Hi, guys. Okay, so uh, Kevin is going to join us in a second. He's just uh, preparing himself. So it's really nice one. Um, Kevin can also, he's got half an hour slot here, but he can extend over if he needs to as well. So he'll be popping up any second. So I'm going to check out the group, see what's going on. So Kevin's going to be doing audience building. So here he is here. Hi, Kevin. Here we go. How are you? Are you all good? We're all good. We're all good. Almost forgot to send the link to you. <laughs> I've also got some breaking news on the marketing front. So the very latest research has been released now on, it's a comparison, what we as marketers think people want and what actually people want. Um, it's really, really interesting. It's just been released less than 24 hours ago. So I'm going to go through that with everybody as well. Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Actually um, really interesting. Yeah. Well, you've got, um, uh, Kevin, I know you're on for half an hour, but you can run over if you, if you need to. Um, Knowing me, I that. probably will. Yeah, you've got an hour. <laughs> right, good. All right, I'm going to hand over to Kevin, and uh, he's going to take it away. You're all right, Kevin. You don't need me around, do you? All right, thanks, David. Can I share screens? I'm able to do that, I assume. Uh, let's just double check. Yes, I can. That's cool. Right, I'm all good. Thank you very much. Cheers, Kevin. All right, lovely. Thank you very much, David. Um, it's been a mammoth session so far, and I've been watching... Uh, with interest as to what David does, because the day resenders are always very good. And it opens our eyes up to the possibilities of what we can and can't achieve within the Zenla platform. And some of it is reasonably simple. But of course, as course creators, we need a bit more than what we have within Zenla. We have the tools, we have the resources, we can build stuff, we can create beautiful courses, we can create amazing landing pages, we can do all of these things. We can create blog posts, we can create lead funnels, we can create webinars. But the biggest question, and this has been the question since the dawn of the internet, is how do we get people to come along to what we're doing? And not only just people, but the right people. And today's session, I'm going to just delve into the very basics of audience building. Now, you might be wondering, well, who is this guy and why do we? Why are we even going to bother listening to him? Well, you know me through the work that I do with Zenla. You know um, the, the challenges, uh, the boot camps, the, all of the things that we do. What you may not know is what I do outside of Zenla and have done in the past. And one of the things that we've always focused on is creating audiences. So to give you an example of that, I've run a 30 day blogging challenge with my partner for many years. We've had nearly half a million people through it. They're an audience of people that want to learn to blog for business. We run one of the largest Kindle book groups on Facebook uh, with over 45,000 people in it. They're all people that are either authors on Kindle or people that want to read Kindle books. We also run one of the business biggest business groups on LinkedIn um, in a specific geographical area. Now, they're all business owners or want to do business with people in that particular area. Now, over and above that, we do this with people week in, week out, building audiences from cold to don't know you to leading them into a position where they'll either become a client, someone that supports your business, or someone that is going to be really interested in what you have to offer at some point. And this is the key to a lot of audience building is not going in for the kill to begin with, but is understanding actually, what am I offering? Who am I offering it to? And how am I going to look after those people to the point where actually they may want to be interested in buying my stuff. And normally what happens is, somewhere in that chain it breaks down which is why it doesn't work often it's at the very beginning point um, we don't fully understand who our audience is for our specific products or services and when we go we we get in this mindset of and we convince ourselves that if we market our stuff to all of the people everywhere within the field that we may work in then actually they'll all come and they'll all buy from us. And what happens is it becomes very bland, very vanilla. 
very unspecific and therefore people can't make a connection that says they want to get involved with you. Now, if you do have any questions along the way of this, then please do put them into the chat. I'm more than happy to answer questions as we go along. So stage one of audience building, before we do absolutely anything else, is we need to understand, and we can work this on a product by product basis, we can work it on a group basis, as in a group of products or courses, but we really need to understand, and we'll start with one, who the specific group of people is that we want to get involved with this thing. So our own end goal in mind, if you go onto any of my challenges, you'll understand end goal is always the first thing that we look at. So this is the product. This is what we want to sell. Who are the people that we want to sell this to? And we need to be specific. So if you're, a, I use dog trainers a lot as an example, because it's an easier one for people to get their head around. I could say, I'm a dog trainer. I train all dogs which is all very nice, it's all very lovely. What it doesn't do is it doesn't actually resonate with people that have maybe specific breeds or specific issues with the dog. So you would, not, you would narrow this down further. So you would narrow it down to, I specialize in training German Shepherds that have fear or aggression problems. Now that doesn't mean, and this is the bit that people really struggle to get their heads around, that you don't train other dogs. What it means is that audience, and you may have already identified it, are people that want to get involved with what you're offering. So, sorry, I'm just getting messages come to, I'm just checking that it's not anything to do with something going wrong. Um, Zoom booted me out the other day, which was uh, interesting, but I'm here. So we need to be really specific. Now, when we understand and we have complete clarity on who our audience is, we can firstly adapt our content towards those people. So we make our offering more attractive for them. So we talk the language that they may talk. Now, as a dog person, I have a German Shepherd. I understand their breed specific issues. Um, any dog trainer that wants to train that particular breed will understand their specific issues. And anyone that has a, owns a German Shepherd that wants their dog trained will be facing those specific issues. So when we adapt our language to that particular audience, what will happen is we'll make a connection somewhere along the line. They get my dog. They've been where I've been. They know what problem I've got. They understand this breed. They understand the range within this breed because there are ranges dependent on breed, uh, the breeding line. Um, some are bred as working dogs. Some are bred as not working dogs, et cetera, et cetera. But it, once we get that right and we get that into our content, we can then go out and start to make the connection with the audience. Now, the first port of call with audience building is we need to know where our audience is before we even do anything else. Because if we don't understand where they are, then they're never going to connect. We're never going to find them anyway. And it sounds so simple, but it's not always that easy. We often assume a lot as business owners and as marketers that, oh yeah, I'll go on here and all these people will come flooding because my mate who's got this same company or does, does the same thing is doing really well over there. And that may or may not be true. What we need to do is we need to find out facts. Now, in a lot of, let's take social media as an example. On social media, every single social media platform has this really wonderful feature called search. So we can go into a social media channel and we can look for what we're looking for using the language that we want to use for our particular audience. And we can start to find out what's going on there. We can go into the search engines as well. We can find out actually what's going on over there. Let's type stuff in. Let's see what comes up. We can go into places like Quora. We can do keyword research and find out what people are actually typing in the search engine. So we might put in a trainer for aggressive German Shepherd. And only one person may ever search for that each month, in which case that's not the language you need to be using for that audience. So we need to go through different channels to work out, one, what's our audience looking for, so we make sure our content connects, and also where are they looking for it? Are they looking on Facebook, for example? Are they looking within certain groups? 
are they looking in directly in the search engines and remember google isn't the only search engine in existence there are others believe it or not um and then we can work out actually our strategy on how do we start to make ourselves aware to this audience because this is the thing with this is it's all well and good us being the world's best kept secret but we need to position ourselves in front of the audience where they are rather than trying to drag them somewhere where they may not want to go so we have to work that out once we've worked that out we can start to go okay our next stage to audience building is for people that want what we offer ultimately at the end the, the end result how do we get them to the point where they they found us okay they may have found us via search they may have found us via facebook page linkedin pinterest instagram whatever it doesn't really matter but now we know that that's where they're hanging out. How do we get them interested enough to want to follow us or to go to the next stage with us? How do we keep them engaged? So the engagement process then starts to kick in once we know where they are. Now, this is where it becomes really, you have to be really considered in your approach here because often what people will do is they'll do a number of things. They'll build lots of numbers on Facebook and then never really do very much of worth over that. Or they'll build a big email list and or lots of visitors to an opt-in page and nobody ever converts. So we have to work out, if this is our specific audience, once they know we're here, what are we going to do that's going to keep them coming back? And this is for free at the moment. So we, we don't want to charge them anything. We just want them to keep coming back to get to know us a bit more and know our business a bit more understand who and what we are so <clears throat> the next stage would be well how do we keep that level of engagement and we can do it in there's so many different ways of doing it but what everything boils down to is the quality and the relevancy of the content that you're going to create often people will go down the i've launched this product i've launched this course here get this sign up for that I don't know you, but you're going to give me your email address and go on a list that I'm probably never going to email again. In which case, again, it doesn't work. So we have to remember people will come in at different stages. So use the Facebook group in New Zenla as an example. So the Facebook group in New Zenla has over doubled in the last 12 months. So people have found us. They want to use a learning management system. They've come into the group. Well, what happens next? Well, as far as Zenla is concerned, we do a number of things. We'll do things like a day with Zenla. Come and get to see the team. Come and let's let's make that type of connection. The main one that we use is we use office hours every week. So the team turn up every single week. We say, hi, here we are. This is what we are about. You know, this is where you can find the resources to get more of what you need out of New Zenla. Then we create events. So we do live workshops. We do boot camps we do all sorts of stuff which is sort of at that point we're saying right you know where we are you know who we are you're still here which is cool uh, you may or may not come in and get involved in the community or the office hours but you're still with us which means you're interested it means we've captured your attention the next stage is well we'll take you into something like a boot camp where you have to put your email in you have to register on the tutorial site to get into it so we're taking that level of commitment to the next stage. So we start with big audience, we start filtering down. And this works for your business too. So we find our audience, wherever that may be, we then ask them to go to the next level, as in give them an opt-in, give them um, some form of useful information, give them a free module to a course, put them on a webinar, which is a information-based webinar. So it's stuff that they can actually action rather than go straight for the come and buy my stuff and this is where we start to get really interesting because then we can start to work out at what level people are interested but i'm not getting into the conversion aspect what i'm talking about is the audience building which is stage one and two so understanding where they are is critical understanding the language that they're using is fundamental because if we don't there's a disconnect we then take them into an environment, whatever environment that is. It could be using a community within um, your Zenla platform that you're using, your Zenla site. 
it may be just keeping them in your blogging area. So constantly writing blogs and reminding them, you know, sign up to get notified about the next, the, the next released blog post. It could be taking them into a Facebook group, a LinkedIn group, following a page, following an Instagram account. At this stage, it's not that important. What's important is that they're there and they're following and they're connected with you because that shows you've got the right people looking there. Stage two, critical stage, is keeping people there because that's the bit most people find difficult. And we get all of these questions as marketers. We get asked so many times, how often should I write a blog post? How many updates should I do on Facebook? What's the best time to post? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and there's thousands of different responses depending on who you talk to. But ultimately, what search engines like, so even on Facebook, we can get found outside. What search engines like is consistency and relevant content. What viewers like, uh, Phoenix is just saying, missed that part, glad to see we think alike then. <laughs> Good job on the live date, right, okay. So what viewers like, is they like something that it actually just interests them as human beings interested in that particular topic. So that could be a range of different stuff. If we post regularly at a certain time, and you'll notice on office hours, we do the same time each week. We alternate it every other week. We've been saying this for the last year. People know when we go live, our event backs up that timing. There is a level of expectation. So they'll go, okay, if we know every Wednesday, these guys are gonna be on office hours. So you start to subconsciously look out for it. The same can be done on your marketing channels. If you decide to post up a useful tip as a dog trainer every Monday, people will get start to get used to seeing that every Monday. When you post it is not so relevant. Obviously, most of the time you want to sort of post it so people get to see it during daylight hours rather than in the middle of the night. So if you're in the UK and you're posting at 10 o'clock in the morning, but your audience is people in the US, probably not such a good time. So you have to use a bit of common sense behind it. But you have to make sure that content is good. And this is where people really struggle because they run out of ideas. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to post. And what happens is the audience get bored. It becomes stale and then they leave you before they've even really got to the point of wanting to get involved. So your strategy behind your engagement content has to be really, really strong. Now, I know David's been talking about um, sites and I did hear the mention of the dreaded pop-up, which is always a very interesting conversation when we get onto um, website design and all of that. But ultimately, what I've learned over the years is what necessarily I want as a marketer isn't always necessarily what the user wants. And we have to find that happy balance between the two. So we meet our objectives as a marketer stroke business owner, as in we want people ultimately to buy our courses. So we want to take them through a route. But people being people don't always necessarily want to go through the same route that we want to put them through, because that's the nature of free thought and people being who they are. So we have to work out what that happy balance is and how can we work whatever we do to a point where the user coming along wants, goes through to our objective if it's right for them and we get what we want from it, which ultimately is a sale because we're a business. And that's a tricky one. However, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share you some information. This has only been released in the last 24 hours. It was a uh, so studies done by Orbit Media it's hot off the press and it's actually really interesting to look at the comparison between the two. So I'm going to share my screen if I can and show you exactly what this looks like. So I'm sharing my screen here. Here we go. Okay. So let me just shut off that. You don't really want to see my conversation with David. Okay, so business to business marketers, referrals and email are good sources of traffic. So we're looking at marketers versus visitors here. Business to business visitors, social and ads are how I find B2B sites. So in this particular one here, we've got this sort of um, 
petrolly type colored here business versus marketers what are the most important sources of traffic to your website and this is what we think business to business website visitors how do you most often discover b2b websites so if we look at search engines we sort of agree search engines are massively important for businesses they're massively important for visitors social media as marketers some marketers apparently according to this research don't value it as much but the people that we're looking to connect with that are looking for us do value it more so uh, 57 percent on in this particular instance so that's a really interesting one so if you're not effectively using social media then that's one to really look out for now online advertising we value apparently less as marketers but that is how people come in nearly 50 percent of people come in to websites via online advertising marketers really hugely value word of mouth marketing and results we think that's an important thing for people coming to our site but people are less convinced on that a surprising one was the email newsletters for me um, you know because we do value that i see high conversion rates on email signups but apparently according to these website visitors they view it less and offline advertising of course low on both counts so that's quite an interesting one, but one that we do hugely agree on is search engines and the way we represent ourselves in search engines as it is as of higher importance to us as a business owner as it is to people trying to find us. So website features that visitors find useful versus website features that marketers find important. So business to business marketers, top three most important features, business to business website visitors, top three most useful features so visitors find the search on a website hugely useful and this has come up a number of times um, within the zendler community about having a search feature on when we installed it into the tutorial site we saw the usage go up so having a search functionality on there is something that is really important it's something that will be passed over to the zendler development team as well to see whether it's something we can implement more deeply into what we have as an offering through the Zenla platform. As marketers, we're sitting here really lowly thinking that people don't care whether there's a search feature on there or not. But clearly, the very latest research is saying a huge amount of people want to search and find stuff quick. Uh, live chat, again, marketers are finding it. Actually, we're not so worried whether it's on there or not. But people are liking to use it. People want to use live chat. Nearly 50% of people coming through are saying this is an important feature. It's one of their top three features that they look for um, and they use. So a live chat feature on there. And I've got this on my Zendler site. I've got um, Live Agent installed on there. So I can have a live chat uh, with people that come along. And it does get used. Is a useful tool. Um, there are companies out there that will monitor it for you as well if you don't have the ability if it's just maybe you in the business there are it's a bit like a call answering service but they do it via your um via live chat on your site so they can monitor and answer people for you to a point uh social media links on websites 20 percent for marketers i'd agree um, i don't see them as particularly important but people do want to go through and check you out elsewhere it's sort of a bit of a comfort blanket for people you know is this a website where else do they exist uh, what i would say as a huge warning for you is when you're building your zenla sites out don't have your social media links at the top of it because they click you on your site and then immediately bounce off and head off to social media because they may be more comfortable there or are happier being there always put it at the bottom of the pages or sort of halfway down on the side a side widget that type of thing but keep it further down, make it available, but not instantly in your face. Uh, homepage slideshow carousel. Um, we deem them as unimportant. Research on loading speeds and all of that does come into play because it does slow sites down. It is a resource heavy thing. It is a little bit, from, from my perspective, a bit out of date as in what we should be doing on our sites. However, there are still a percentage of people that do like to see a carousel. Now, I would imagine those people are more going on to product-based sites rather than 
going on to LMS systems. So maybe not so relevant for us here at Zenla, but I, I like the fact that if I go on to something like Amazon, there's a little carousel of different things and associated products. If I come on to um, a new Zenla site where someone's doing different trainings, do I want a carousel scrolling around different courses? Probably not. It's not important to me. So that one for us in particular, not so important. Uh, dates on blog articles. Now, I deem these as an absolute don't do it. Uh, I like to write evergreen content. I tell people to switch the dates off. People do like to see dates on it because they want to make sure that you're current, you're up to date, the information you're putting out there is up to date. Again, we can't always let the user dictate what we do on our sites. However, that is something they're looking for. I will still continue to say I'm not putting a date on it but that is one just to bear in mind. Um, features marketers value more than visitors. So calls to action. We talk about calls to action all of the time. Um, it is, we need it to, because we need to navigate people around. Um, for visitors, they don't find them particularly helpful. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that's based on, but it's an interesting statistic. Only 28% of them um, are finding them any good um, or, or they're not really that bothered by them. Um, gated content, so that's where we go. Here's a blog post, we'll give you half of it. If you do a social share, we'll unlock the other half of it. As a marketing tool, it works, but your content has to be exceptional for people to do it. Um, gated content could also, I suppose, be looked at as an opt-in. So sign up here and we'll give you this series of blog content video series blah 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 whatever um, it's basically where it's they have to take an action to unlock that next piece of information um and they're not so bothered by it we, the marketers are saying they don't value it that highly um, i do value them reasonably highly but it's still interesting to look at and then pop-up boxes you know, I know David's got a dislike of pop-up boxes. I think pop-up boxes being used properly are massively effective. Um, Nine percent of people are bothered by having pop-ups on this on a site that they visit. That's not very many at all. You know, that's less than one in ten say this is a problem for me. Yes, there are pop-up blockers now. There are all sorts of stuff. The go-to one I find is the exit in, exit intent block pop-up. So not the one that hits you as soon as you come on. Multiple pop-ups on the same page is just outright annoying. But an exit intent pop-up actually converts quite highly. So people that are just going to go and zoom up to the top of the screen, leave, and then it goes, hey, before you go, you know, do you want this coupon? Do you want to do this? Do you want that? Have you looked at this yet, etc.? It doesn't always have to be a sell. It could be a redirect. So if they've come on to a specific... Um, sales page for example and they're going to click off of it without taking our action that we want as in we want you to buy this and they're about to leave we could have a pop-up come up and go hey before you go you can get 10 percent off here for this course you could do that so pop-ups i like but they've got to be used correctly and then what visitors want from website isn't it isn't always what marketers give them. So visitors and marketers are in alignment about. So the top one is where we sort of agree. Um, so business, business marketers, top three most important characteristics, B2B website visitors, top for them. So answers to questions, I think we can all agree pretty much that's what we're there for. We want to give information. They're looking for answers. We want to give them answers. Easy to navigate, of course, um, no surprises there. We agree it has any site has to be easy to navigate. People get frustrated. We don't get them to see the information that they want. Expert advice and insights, of course, always useful. We can do this via blog posts. That's part of why we have a website. Uh, video and visuals, we agree on that to a lesser extent, but you know we still agree that they're important and they can tell a very interesting um story as we go through so characteristics marketers value more than visitors and this one for me was really interesting so as marketers we do value social proof so 
um, things like testimonials, uh, reviews and things like that. We want to show people actually we're good at what we do and we can sit here and tell you, but isn't it nicer if we get somebody else to tell you? But here, um, our website visitors are finding that not so important. They're not valuing that as highly as we value it. So I think that's a really interesting one. And I'd like to understand more about why that is, because to me, that's a fundamental of marketing is to be able to do that. It may well be that they value seeing you in multiple places more than they value the social proof. I'm unsure, but it was an interesting statistic that came out. Another one which I'm not surprised about is a lot of marketers value the compelling brand message stroke story. And we've got very caught up over the last few years of airing our entirety of everything that we've ever done to get us to the point where we are, our brand story. Um, our website visitors are not so bought into this idea as maybe a lot of marketers are. And I can understand that. Sometimes if I want to go and buy, um, uh, you know, dog training for someone, if, I were, if I'm looking for a dog trainer, do I need to know the brand story behind that dog trainer? For me, what would be more important is the social proof. I'd like to understand some of their experience, of course, but do I need a compelling brand message out there that will convince me to want to get involved with that dog trainer? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, the branding experts in the Zenla group, I'm sure will have an opinion, a very strong opinion on this. But as this statistic here shows, 44% against 24%. 24%, that's a quarter of your visitors. Three quarters of your visitors just don't care based on this research. So we've got to sit up and take notice of what we're doing there. Uh, beautiful design. Maybe we value functionality more than design, but our visitors are, are slightly different on that. They want it to look good. Um, and I'm sure, again, our branding people will go, yeah, absolutely spot on. It has to look the business for the business. Um, and then team photos and bios. And this is one I've always, always thought is hugely important. Apparently, most other marketers don't, but I've always thought it was really important. 11% of people are saying, yeah, it's um, it's useful. So I think that's if you do have a team um, or you don't have a bio on there for yourself, then you need to seriously consider just adding it in. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to put one in, you know, but clearly people are looking for it and they're wanting it. So one in 10 people um, are saying, actually, that's important for them. So that could be a conversion factor. So they're the latest stats. And this information, um, I'll, I'll share it into the group anyway, so people can read the full document that goes with it, because there's a full report that goes with this as well, um, which is really, really interesting. But it gives you an overview of how sometimes we can get up, caught up in our own world. I'm going to stop sharing that for now. And where we may or may not be with that. Yes, Phoenix, it is very useful information. Oh, David's back with me. Um, <laughs> I didn't see you there, David, I was screen sharing. So if we tie all of this together with our audience building, then we start to formulate a picture and a strategy of how we can present ourselves and also make our audience happy and ultimately that's what we want they don't care about us when they don't know us they don't know we exist they couldn't care less about our motives our passion our dreams the journey we've taken to get to where we are the hardships the joys the successes any of that it's all completely irrelevant to them at that stage so when we start right at the very beginning of how do we connect with these people we need to do what's important to them. And what's important to them is their initial thing that they want to find you for. And if we can't get that right, the rest of it stays hidden. Nobody ever gets to hear about any of it. So, but we do need to be prepared to take them down this whole path as we move forward with that relationship with them. And that can be done virtually. It can be done 
quite strategically and it should be done over time. I don't, I've never seen a really exceptional marketing system put in place overnight. It just doesn't exist. Um, I've seen good websites built and launched, but they've had poor outreach. I've seen people build really good communities with no follow through with it. They've taken them to dead websites. They've taken them to out of date websites, you know, non-responsive websites that you go onto a mobile phone. Uh, and remember, half of your users that come to your site will be on a mobile device. In fact, um, it's probably even slightly more than that now. So the connectivity through what we do online isn't always there. And we've got to remember, we've got to make life easy for people. If you're getting involved with you is difficult, people just leave because they don't want hassle in their life. They have enough hassle in their life as it is. They don't want hassle in getting involved with you. So we have to make it really easy. You say you're going to do something, you do something. If you're talking about a certain thing, that's what you do. You deliver that. If you, you grow in a group of German Shepherd owners, then talk about German Shepherds. It's not difficult. But we tend to sidetrack ourselves by desperation or over enthusiasm or someone saying, why don't you do this? Aren't you missing out on that, et cetera, et cetera. And it takes us completely off track of our focus. Start always with, look at it this way, one course, that's what we want to sell, and then reverse engineer it. What audience do I have today that would buy that course? And I'm pretty sure for most of you, it's going to be you could count them on one hand. Because that's the truth. Even if you've got a large Facebook group, they're not warmed up. They don't know it exists. They don't know you do that. Multiple different reasons. So your next question is, how can I grow an audience of people? I've specified my audience. I know who it is that I want to buy this course. How do I grow a people, group of people that have the interest to ultimately buy this course? And then you work out what pathway that will take. And it will always involve doing research, looking at other groups, looking at your peers, maybe that are selling something similar. That doesn't mean copy them. And I would 100% say do not copy them. But look at what they're doing. If there's a successful group out there for German Shepherds that seem to be doing quite well, have a look at what's going on, interactions happening. What are the questions that they asking? What are they doing in there that's keeping them engaged? And see what you can do in your own unique way that will create something similar for you. And then go and do it. But do it consistently, do it regularly, and make sure you look after people. You wouldn't invite someone into your house, sit them at the kitchen table, and then go and have a nap for an hour. You just wouldn't do it. Yet we do it online all of the time. People work really hard to go, oh, you're my audience. Follow my Facebook page. That would be awesome. And they follow your page because you've opened the front door and you've let them into the kitchen and then you ignore them. You don't post anything for three weeks. And they're sitting there going, what's going on here then? So you have to work that strategy of once you've got that group of people, how you're going to engage with them regularly. And it has to be regularly. What does that look like? It might be doing stuff like we do with our office hours. It might be a question and answer session on a particular breed. It might be doing a live training demonstration once a week. There's so many things it can be or a combination of things. But what you have to do is not leave them sitting at the kitchen table while you're going to have a nap for a week. Because people will just go, I'm never coming back here. It's rude. And it is. So, And it doesn't serve your purpose because that person is never going to take the next step with you. And the next step is where we look to actually, now they've understood us, they're getting warmed up, they're liking what we're doing, they understand us as a business, they like the way that we do our stuff in our own unique way. How do we then move them to the next part through our funnel to get in involved in what we want to do ultimately to buy our course? So reverse engineer it, work it through. Take note of what I talked about in the Orbit uh, Media report, because that will influence how people behave on your sites. And to me, that's research is fantastic because it gives you an idea. What that research doesn't do is talk about my specific audience. 
it talks about a cross section of audiences. So what if you have a specific audience that you know that likes a particular thing? Now, if I had a German Shepherd and I wanted to find a trainer that specialised in fear based reactive training for a German Shepherd, a bio for me and a history would probably be one of my top three things I'd look for because I want to know they've handled more than just one German Shepherd. Right. If you're selling me a course on designing a logo, would that story be as important to me? Probably not. Yeah. I don't care whether you've been to design school or not. What I more want to see is actually what's the course about? What steps do you take? And are there examples of some of the stuff that you've done? That would be more interesting. So work it to your own audience, but bear in mind what those statistics are, because there are some really interesting ones. And if you're spending six months trying to work your brand story out and that's holding you back, well, you've seen the numbers, you know, two and 10 people don't care. Uh, sorry, eight in 10 people don't care. Only two do. Is it worth you putting all of that effort into something that might not generate that result? And that's what you have to work out. So audience building isn't difficult, but understand who they are, find out where they are, find out what language they're talking, when they get involved with you, wherever it is, look after them, and then look at taking them to the next stage for you. And if you do that consistently, what happens is you start to build a momentum. It will be really slow to start with. I mean, really slow to the point where you go, I'm not even going to bother anymore because nobody comes to my lives, nobody likes my stuff, not growing my page, whatever. But suddenly, at some point, it will turn for you, providing you've got all of those elements correct. Um, marketing is not a sprint. It's never been a sprint. Even if you do paid marketing, it's still not a sprint. You have to be in it for the long haul. Now, you can do stuff quicker than other stuff, but building an audience takes time. And to do it properly, you've got to be willing to commit that time to doing it to reap the rewards of selling more courses to earn more money. And that's the bottom line of all of it. But hopefully that's given you a little bit of a understanding. <laughs> Carrie, you've got, you love German. I've got a German shepherd. Um, that's why I mention her. And she's, I call her a troubled girl. Um, she's had some issues in, in the life before we had her. So uh, I'm a massive dog person. I like big dogs. Um, so I always talk about the, the dog training world. But um, hopefully that's given you some ideas as to what you may be missing out on within your audience building. Um, I'm probably actually going to do a boot camp on audience building where we get into the nitty gritty of actually do this, do that. And this is how it will work for you and actually help you to start building an audience. Because at the moment I've given you the structure, I've given you the ways of doing it but that doesn't always translate into reality. So I'll probably look at, at some point, might probably be in the new year now, doing a boot camp on audience building because it's one of the most valuable skills you can learn as a business owner online. And if you don't have an audience, you just don't sell anything. It, it's just pointless. So you have to understand how it will work for you, your business, and ultimately to get to the goal that you want to achieve. Um, and for us here at Zenla, that's going to be selling courses because that's primarily what New Zenla is for. So I'll probably do a focus boot camp on that, I think. Um, but for now, I've done half, well, as, as always, I've gone over my half an hour. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I can't see any questions in there. But you can always pop them in. Um, I'm always in the group. Bring them to office hours if you wish. Um, pop them in this afternoon session if you like. I'll keep my eye out on the chat on that anyway. Um, but that's my session done. I'll share the link to that research as well. So you can look at the accompanying paper that goes with it. Because it keeping up to date with what's happening in the online world is important. Um, even if you don't action everything, and I wouldn't suggest you action everything at once, but just to digest that information, even if it is, you know, you could poll your people based on that information. So, you know, if you've got a group of a thousand um, people on your email list, for example, and you said, look, I'm thinking of putting this pop up on my site, 
how would you feel if you saw that? Now, they're going to give you an honest answer because they're already involved with you. Now, I've done this before where um, I've polled our people about pop-ups and I had two people that came back that said, I would never visit a website with a pop-up. I hate it. It's unbelievably terrible. It's the worst thing in the world. And when I looked at their account in my email list, both people had signed up through multiple pop-ups on my site. Um, so you've got to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt as to what they mean is they don't like annoying pop-ups, pop-ups that do not give them the right information, that follow them around the site, every page you go on, multiple things are popping out the screen at them. I think that's what most people mean with a dislike pop-ups. If you've got a well-used one that's, that's configured correctly and it serves an absolute purpose for being there, most people would not object. Um, there are things like full screen pop-ups on mobiles that get, um, let's just say, negative attention from the from the search engines. Um, they don't like it. You've got to be able to, to close it easily. So those ones, you, if you've been on those news sites where you just can't get off the thing and it's covering your screen and you can't find that, the tiniest ever little X in the world to try and get away from it. I end up leaving those sites because they, they annoy me. But things like that don't work. The user experience is absolutely key to all of this. When you're building an audience, you've got to make it easy for them. You've got to give them the right information. You've got to make it a joy for them to be in your environment. Um, and that means us working harder than ever before to make sure that happens. Because if you're a lazy marketer, you'll be a poor business. And it, it, that's exactly how it works. And put all the competition aside because there's more than enough business out there for everybody. Don't copy the competition, but observe them, see what they're up to, see what they may be doing well that you may not be, um, and maybe incorporate it, but be consistent, make an effort, show that you're making an effort. Even if you get it wrong, sometimes people don't care as long as you've tried. I mean, the things that I've got wrong in Zen over the last year are phenomenal, you know, um, but it doesn't make a difference if your intentions are right. And, you, you know, you just say to people, you, people see if you're trying or not, if you're genuinely there to help. And if you are, the audience will stick with you. If all you're doing is vaguely covering up a consistent sales pitch, people will leave in droves. They won't even want to come near you. If your content is lazy and you can't be bothered, then people will go, well, if you're not that invested in us, why should we stay? They'll leave. So you have to show a genuine interest to say, you know what, I do want an audience for this. I have this deep desire to help people with this particular issue, whatever it is, whatever group of people it is. And you know what, here's the level that I'm willing to go to to help you achieve whatever it is you need to by being with me. And when you show that through the effort you put in, people recognise it instantly. Nowadays, it's it's as clear as night and day when people are being genuine and really invested in what their audience wants and needs against people that just see an audience as a cash cow. And it really is obvious nowadays, um, you know, because so many people are doing so badly at it, but there's also a lot of people doing really well at it. And that's made a divide online. So be the one that does really well at it. And you can all do it because you're not on your own with it. Pro users, premium users, you get, of course, access to all of the boot camps. You get access to all of the additional trainings that we do, um, which will help you market properly your Zenla sites. Um, and this doesn't have to be just used for one course. It can be used across your entirety of the time you're using Zenla. Um, and that will help you. So that's it for me for this session. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up on that happy note. Um, David, I hope you found it interesting as well. Yeah, it's, it's always, yeah, it's always really interesting, <clears throat> especially to see all the stats and things. And yeah, you know, Kevin had mentioned it's, um, these are things you need to keep an eye on, but it's like, you don't eat, not every single point needs to be addressed. You know, you can overwhelm yourself. And I think like Kevin touched on there, people um, with their sites overcomplicate it. You know, keep it simple at start. Grow as you grow. 
don't just jump in. I need assignments. They're going to be compulsory. I've got to put quiz in there. I've got to put surveys in there. People just overwhelm themselves when you really don't need to start off. You've got to start to build a list. You've got to get some stuff out to people and um, communicate. Marketing is just about talking to people. That's. But it's, I mean, any business is the same and an online business is no different. When yeah. you start a business, generally, for most people, they just start with them. And they're the cook, bottle washer, everything. They do the whole shebang. And therefore, you have the time. You might not necessarily have the resources uh, financially to do get more people involved. So you start off with your foundations of your business. What is it I need to do to earn the money I need to get to get someone else involved? It, basic business concept. It's not a difficult one. So and if you apply that into Zenla, like David says, just don't overwhelm yourself with it maybe pick one social media channel and build your audience there to bring them into your Zenla site. You may only have one course there. That's cool. It doesn't matter. Um, if you only ever sell one course, but you sell it a thousand times, who cares? When you get to the point of actually I'm getting reasonably good revenue in there, you can go, actually, can I now afford a part-time assistant? They might be able to create some of the content to keep my Facebook group going. I'll go over to Instagram and start building Instagram. So you then start expanding out. But what you can't do is do the whole lot yourself. It's absolutely physically impossible to do it all and do it well. And like David said, absolutely right. You'll get overwhelmed. You'll do it all poorly. You'll get frustrated. You'll probably end up crying. And, you know, it just won't work for you. And you'll put it down as a, this business didn't work. It was rubbish. When the reality of it is you just tried to do too much. And there are marketers out there that are always coming up with the newest thing you've got to be on this you've got to be on that you've got to do this if you don't do that you're missing out blah 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 and then 10 seconds later they're selling you on a course on the new thing their only interest is selling their their thing their training on the new thing not that that new thing will work for you because it's new so you have to be really specific with you know really um, committed to yourself to say this is my plan until this is done, I'm not moving on to the next bit. I'm not incorporating anything different. I want to get this bit done first. Once that bit's done, then you can move on to the next bit. Actually, do I have time and can I incorporate that whilst I'm still managing, managing the first bit? And there will always be shiny things out there. There will always be lovely new things out there. From the dawn of time, it's been like that on the internet. There's always been the next greatest thing released. And some marketers are really, really quite convincing at telling you you won't succeed without it, but you've succeeded up to now without it. So carry on what you're doing. You've got a really good resource here with the Zenla platform um, to get you going. So we, I know we get a lot of new people coming to New Zenla every week. Um, I think we're up to about 60, 70 new people in the Facebook group each week. Just start off, quick start guide get the foundations in and then every time that, that once that foundation is in and it's strong you just build one layer of bricks at a time and before you know it you've got your first course out and that's all going nicely you've maybe put a few blog posts out maybe you've started to get a facebook page going and people are starting to find it and get interested then you go actually you know what that's working really nice now i need to get a, maybe a little lead magnet going just don't pressurize yourselves um, because if you come across as pressured or desperate, uh, even if you convince yourself you're not, everybody else on the other side of that screen can feel it. It is, you really do feel it. And I've been in that position. I've been in through hard times with business where I've been that person that thought nobody can know that I'm in this trouble. And they all did because I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is. It must be a subconscious thing that you do, but people can smell the desperation of finance a mile off. So you have to be confident, trust yourself, trust your process, you know, and take it easy, take it steady, realize it will take time. As an example, when we were doing one-to-one -one coaching with people, our, um, our time from people finding us to wanting to work with us was around about 18 to 24 months. Right. I didn't know that at the time. We thought it would be like a couple of weeks, maybe. 
but it wasn't. And even now we have people that have been with us. In actual fact, I took a client on this week that we've known for nine years, never, ever bought anything from us before ever. And they just sent us a message and said, you know what? I'm in a really good place at the moment. I need your help with this. Is this something we can do? And we're like, yeah, that's cool. Um, that's what true audience building is, longevity. It's not just a quick, I've got a course to sell. I'm going to build an audience and I'm going to flog it. It's really about getting deeply in those people and getting them to come along with you as you grow as a business, as a person, as your offerings grow. And they want to, you know, Zen is a really good example of this. When I talk to people that are members and they they were in it from the first version of Zenla and they've stuck with it as Zenla's expanded and changed and then opened up its beta and its next version of beta. We're not even launched yet and people will be with us for the launch. And they see that whole thing that we've been through, you know, bringing me and David in on the team, now bringing Alice in on the team, you know, growing the support side of things, all of that. There's been an audience there all the way through. That have come with us and people have just come in and they've grown as we've grown and that's true audience building um we keep engagement going we don't have a dead facebook group by any means you know it's massively active we have i call them super fans but people that will shout about zenla all over the place because we've we've so invested in the success of people using this platform people know it they feel it we're not desperate selling you know, you buy New Zenla and it's no good for you. We've got a cast iron 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks very much. We'll give it back to you. There's no quibble on that. There's no, oh, we're going to fight you through the ends of the earth and dredge you through hellfire and brimstone to get your money back. No way. We don't need to do that. You know, of course, we're a business. Of course, we need revenue to take development forward. Um, but it's happening anyway. And it's happening because we're looking after our audience we're we're finding the people that need a really good all-in-one learning management system we're looking after them when they're finding us we're giving them exceptional content we're following up with everything that we say we're going to do you know we're developing the platform in a way no other system is doing we're absolutely um, behind the product that we have we know it's good we use it david and i both use it for our, our external businesses outside of zenla um and our audience is building and growing along with us. Of course, you'll lose people as you move through for different reasons. Maybe they don't want to do courses anymore. Maybe they've stopped trading. Maybe they've gone and done something else. You'll always get natural fall off. But there's a huge audience in this group that are far before I was involved um, that have been with the system a long, long time. And they've seen it change and transpire. And that is how audiences really help a business to grow and expand and become bigger and become better and you know in five years time when Zenda is out it's full launched it's dominating the LMS system it's dominating dominating the all-in-one system online you guys here will say hey I remember when that was in beta you know and you'll be proud to be involved with it you'll be proud to say you know, I was there helping this business move forward. And that's, for me, sums up audiences. So if you want a good example, look at what happens in the Zenla communities and how you feel, how you feel being part of that. And that's what you need to create for your business outside, because if we can do it, you can do it. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Superb, Kevin. That's brilliant. So that's Kevin with us. Uh, always great to have him on and uh, great information as well. And you're going to post that on the on the group, are you? Yeah, Kevin? I'll, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll probably do a separate post on the group so people can find that information because I think it's relevant to people. Um, so I, I'm not going to take those images and just nick them. I'm not going to do that. I'll, do, I'll put a link to their where they've put that information so people can go and visit them because if they've taken the time and trouble to collate all of that and research it the very least that they should get is the traffic going over to their their own environment for that brilliant all right so kevin's round up our first session session one so in about three hours well, actually two and a half hours um kevin was on for an hour nearly so uh, really good well done kevin 
Um, yeah, so we've got Alice Miriam. She's talking about Facebook marketing. So we are really steaming ahead with all the marketing stuff. And as you've already heard, Kevin's running a few marketing-based um, boot camps. So he'll be running those. All the, They'll come in the announcements anyway. But for now, we'll see you again at three. I'll introduce Miriam, um, Alice, and she'll come in. I'll call him Miriam instead of Alice. It Who's just Alice? jumps into my head. Miriam, Alice, Alice Miriam. So we'll be announcing her at three o'clock. So guys, uh, get your questions ready as well. Like if any of the stuff that Kevin's talking about, you want to put in there as a question or any of the stuff that I did earlier, great. And also get your questions ready for Alice as well, because she'll be hot on it um, this afternoon at three o'clock. Until then, both of us will say bye-bye. Thanks very much. Bye.